Is the Redskins ball nutritious, or is that just kind of a mean spirit? No, that's, that's actually just an appetizer for what's to come tonight. Yeah. Are you worried about your quarterback going with Vinny this time? Absolutely not. 17 years in this league, he's got it covered. You don't have a uh, you don't have a song like the Redskins. We've already heard theirs, but you do have something, don't you? We're coming back, coming back to FedEx right after this. Still to come on countdown. Last year, the Chiefs had plenty of offense, but couldn't stop anyone. Is Dick Vermeil ready to hoist the Vince Lombardi trophy again? Our guys will weigh in on the NFL's Dark Horse teams. And tonight's two starting QBs couldn't be any more different. So who has the advantage, the veteran or the kid? We're talking Testa Verde and Ramsey next. continue to make waves with their signing. Most of their choices make a lot of sense, and that includes Hernan Crespo from the Italian joint Inter. This means that the London side now have one Sebastian Barone to feed the ball to his Argentine teammate. So far, Chelsea have spent close to $150 million to get the dream team, and I guarantee you the spending spree is not over yet. In these days of a depressed economy, I think all this spending becomes a danger to the game. When somebody so rich can spend this kind of money to buy players with no regard to value, it should raise red flags. I ask the question, is there not a danger that players may be bought just to keep them out of another team? I think we need to start paying very close attention to this matter. It's a situation that could get out of hand very easily. What do you think? That's what's in the Al Onion Bike this week. I'm Tommy Smith with a Y. The Warriors of the NFL return to ESPN for another season of American football. The New York Jets are ready to soar, and they'll look to veteran Vinny Testaverde to pilot the team. And the Washington Redskins are looking to turn their fortunes around and make a playoff run. With a roster filled with former Jets, the opening game of the season has all the drama that is the NFL. The Jets and the Redskins, live today, the NFL on ESPN. The New York football Jets, who says they didn't come ready to roll here. There they are getting set a little bit, little while ago as we near kickoff for the Jets and Redskins, the 84th NFL season. 39 and 24. Not a, uh, not a play call, but the difference in age tonight between the starting quarterbacks of Vinny Testaverde and of Patrick Ramsey. Vinny came into the league in 1987. That was the year the Redskins won their second Super Bowl under the, the tutelage of the great head coach, Joe Gibbs. Tonight, will youth be served, or will we have to respect our elders? Here's Nick Bakai. Quarterback. They're like house pets. You get them too young, they pee in your shoes out of innocence. You get them too old, they pee in your shoes out of senility. You want them right in the middle, old enough to understand the game plan, young enough to still make all the throws. Jets, Redskins? We'll say hello to two signal callers on either side of their prime. Uh, Patrick Ramsey's so young, he has no idea the Buccaneers used to be tangerine. Vinny, I turned 40 in November Testaverde. He actually wore tangerine his rookie season. Jet fan or Redskin fan, this is scary stuff. But if you're a real football fan, fear is always your co-pilot. So let's get under the hood and take a closer look. Mobility? Well, the kid's got the edge, which is good because he still hasn't learned how to check off to his first receiver. At this point, Vinny, he's about as mobile as I am, but he knows how to slide. Note to Pennington, study film. The Spurrier system, 
Well, that was supposed to take the league by storm. Now it's in the hands of a youngster who's still fumbling with the bra strap. And how well do Skins fans sleep knowing that Vinny is the only quarterback in this game who's actually completed a regular season pass to Lavernius Coles? Hey, even their audibles are different. Ramsey, Chisnit, Red Bull, Hut, Vinny, Dungarees, Hi-Fi Stereo System, Prostate, Hut Hut. Whatever happened to Blue 28? And how do you handicap two players whose respective dream dates are Liz Taylor and the Olsen twins? Are we kids or what? Well, you can always check the scoreboard, or you keep your eyes open for my key reads. Tendencies that didn't take much film breakdown to find. You know, Vinny's putting a scare into the Jets coach's box when Paul Hackett starts pulling out his two remaining hairs, like I'm one to talk. But the real tell? That's when the Jets bring back Ray Lucas to run the wishbone. How do you know Ramsey's having a bad game? Keep an eye on Spurrier's chin. If it starts trembling and quaking like a slow boat to Dimple City, you know the old ball coach is getting that quick hook ready. Can you say Rob Johnson? Oh, boy. But that's why they play the games. And me, I'm just craving one that counts. For ESPN, I'm Nick Bakai. All right, Nick, thank you as always. Well, Vinny's craving the opportunity to get the Jets started in the right direction. A guy that had the Jets started in really the right direction, number 12, Joe Willie Namath. He's with Sal. All right, thanks, Joe Namath. Obviously a huge atmosphere here tonight. I saw Spike Lee talking to you. The Jets are really in the driver's seat for this game with Vinny coming in for Chad Pennington. How do you see it? Well, I don't know about the driver's seat, Sal. You know, uh, I don't think any of us know really what's going to happen. Neither team has played their first string four quarters. We don't know what they have. I do know what Vinny has, and Testaverde can play. But you know it's a team game, and the defense has to do well. I saw Barry Sanders held to minus rushing yardage. I know Curtis Martin can run, but that offensive line has to do a job. And uh, special teams, you know, it's a team game. And so uh, I'm not worried one little bit about Testaverde. I think he's going to do great. What do you see in this Redskins defense that might worry the Jets? Nothing. Nothing. I know they have some good players. I do. But we don't worry about them. We take care of ourselves. And I believe the Jets are a better football team. Can, can the Jets get to the playoffs with Testaverde as the quarterback? Absolutely. If, uh, you know, Lady Luck plays a role because of injuries happening to people. If uh, the team can stay reasonably healthy, they've proven what kind of determination and character they have coming off last season. And uh, they know what they have to do. But you know what? Everyone's optimistic this time of the year. Even the Bengals are optimistic this time of the year, you know. So we got to see. And tonight's great because we haven't seen either team play four quarters yet. All right. Thanks, Joe. So, From a guy who knows a little bit about winning a big game, Boomer. Yeah, I, I, isn't it just he and Joe? Well, that's how he won the big game. You know, he's disguised by nothing. Yeah, we don't care about their that's defense. Right. We got to do what we got to do. He's white shoes. That's great. Some of us wore him in junior high and high school because of that guy. Joe Willie Namath with the Jets this year to be in a bigger role. And Joe and Britney Spears on the same show. There, there should be a connection there. At any rate, backup quarterbacks, okay? If you had a team... The, the backup had to play like Vinny, eight or ten games. I don't mean one or two. Who is in good shape? We think the Jets aren't bad shape, Steve. Who is the best, obviously, Philadelphia and St. Louis from last year. St. Louis, as you know, has a great reach backup. But Philadelphia has three guys that have proven that they can come in for a short stint and win games. Yeah, I agree with you very, very quickly. Mark Bolger, and I hope I'm not suffering from Scott Mitchell disease, but Mark Bolger came in. He won those five games. Uh, he played great. One of the highest rated quarterbacks in the league last year. I think if anything happened to Kurt Warner, they'd be in good shape. Well, who's in the worst shape, Mike? Uh, Indianapolis Colts. I mean, you got Peyton Manning, who's never missed the football game. Who's his backup? Uh, Brock, 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 Brock Hewitt? Yeah. Now, come on, man. <laughs> you don't ever want your backup player if he never, you don't know, you don't want him to play if he never plays. Well, I think the Raiders are in a little bit of trouble, too, because if they lose, Rich Gannon does everything. You know, in that West Coast offense, so quick, so efficient. And I'm not that Marcus Tuyas simply hasn't played much, and he had a tough preseason, which makes it harder. But if Richie Annan goes down, the Raiders are really in trouble. I I'll make my point like this. Tennessee, Steve McNair, he's a star in this league, maybe an MVP candidate. Who's Billy Bullock? 
Well, we didn't know who Mark Bolger was. <laughs> yeah, but who's Billy Bolger? Uh, he's the backup. <laughs> Billy he's Bolger, the come on. He... The answer to that question, uh -huh. he's the backup uh -huh. to Steve McNair, right? Uh -huh. they, they hope that they don't really have to find out That's correct. who Billy Volick is. You never know, but it, it's been proven that you rarely get through the season. The Brett Favre's and the Peyton Manning, right. you guys that play the whole year, Steve, sure. as you know, they're few and far between, aren't they? And speaking of Brett Favre, I think you know, Doug Peterson it, capable, but Brett Favre's one of those guys that does so much that the same kind of thing with the That's Raiders. Right. That's right. I can't even remember. Who was the quarterback before Brett? Bart Starr? I don't even Bart remember. Well, I mean, there was... Uh, I know. Yeah. I'm, I'm, the Magic Man. I know who it is. The oh, Magic okay. Man. It was the point. At any rate, when we <laughs> return, we're here on the field. The Jets are warming up behind us. The skins are down there. We're getting you set for kickoff. Coming up on Countdown. Last season, Warren Sapp and the Bucks were the kings of the football world. Can they repeat the feat? You won't want to miss our Super Bowl picks. And at Florida, he was a genius. But last season in Washington, he was taken to school by the rest of the league. Is Steve Spurrier ready to master the NFL? You'll find out next. You are watching Sunday NFL Countdown, presented by Old Spice. ESPN goes spanning the globe this September to bring you the world of sports. The UEFA Champions League returns for another thrilling season where the finest clubs battle for the top prize of European football. The IRL IndyCar Series continues with the world's best drivers pushing the fastest open-wheel cars to the limit. The Major League Baseball regular season winds down with the teams fighting for a position in the playoffs. Generation X athletes compete in Asian X Games 5. The legends of golf hit the links in the Champions Tour all month long. The top clubs of Holland hit the pitch for Dutch football. Great action this September on ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. ESPN brings you the Kroger Senior Classic. Last year, Bob Gilder got his second consecutive win when he defeated Tom Jenkins in the playoff. The Kroger Senior Classic, first round, Saturday on ESPN. Speed thrills on ESPN. The IRL IndyCar Series continues. The next stop, Chicagoland Speedway. We're defending champion Sam Hornish Jr. will try to take the checkers at the Chicago Indy 300. Monday, live on ESPN. Now Patrick Ramsey on his shoulders or on his arm rides the hopes of Steve Spurrier and the Washington Redskins. We'll see the youngster in action tonight. Last season, his first with the Redskins marked only the second losing season in 18 years as head coach for Steve Spurrier. Years at Florida. The USFL's Tampa Bay Bandits. Only one season at Duke was the old ball coach under 500. Last year, Spurrier found that imagination and wide open offense alone doesn't translate into a winner. Mark Schwartz reports on what's been learned going into his second year in the NFL. Basically, hey, Dan Snyder hired me because of what our teams did on offense and winning championships. Uh, so I, he wants me to coach the way I've always coached. And basically, I'm doing that. Steve Spurrier says he's the same old ball coach, yet there's evidence to the contrary. The old ball coach switched quarterbacks five times last season. The new ball coach says he's sticking with Patrick Ramsey. 
the old ball coach surrounded himself with ex-gators who knew his system by heart. Now, not one is back. Obviously, uh, looking back, we brought too many of our, my former players, Florida players, in, and it didn't quite work out. Uh, anytime a coach does that, and uh, maybe those players don't perform at a high level, then uh, you're subject to being criticized, which is fair. We probably didn't have the, the guys to, to go back there and, and throw it around like we, like we always did at Florida. Maybe we were a little foolish to think that we could just come in and run our offense, and away we went. Do you think in any sense you need to be more cautious with play calling in the oh, NFL? Certainly, certainly a little bit, certainly. Uh, if you can't get it off, if you can't pass protect uh, 40 times a game, then you're foolish for going back there. For two decades, the old ball coach had no use for an offensive coordinator, but the new ball coach named Hugh Jackson to the position and then tried to figure out how to use him. I asked Andy Reid, and I said, you call the plays, you've got an offensive coordinator, how you do it? And he told me how he did it. Everybody says that uh, a good leader learns to delegate. He can take a step back and take a look at all three aspects in terms of special teams as well. He's involved. He's definitely involved. He was even in the defensive meeting room one time. <laughs> Spurrier calls new defensive coordinator George Edwards one of my guys, something he could not say about the man who ran his defense a year ago, Marvin Lewis, who is the league's highest paid assistant coach. In my opinion, my personal opinion, I felt like, you know, there might have been a little bit of struggle of, of power last year. And it shouldn't have been that way, but it was. And, and now it's a totally different atmosphere this year. Everybody knows their role. Everybody knows their place. According to some veterans, last year's Redskins, who were 29th in the NFL in turnover ratio, were as undisciplined off the field as on. Spurrier had rules, but rarely were they enforced. That is no longer the case. Now we find in practice we're fine for making stupid penalties and bad turnovers, things like that. I think from a playing standpoint on the field has really helped us. Last year, do you remember any Redskins being fined? Not by coach, and that's uh, been a difference. You know, he, he doesn't like fighting, so if you fight, you get fined. Uh, if you're just blatantly up outwardly openly defiant of, of the rules you'll get fined yeah we've, we've sort of laid down the law a little bit more and, and you have to do that or else it carries over to everything you do in, on the team last year spurrier ran up the score during the preseason this year he's learned it's better to peak in late december instead of late august last year he spoke boldly about winning the nfc east now he offers no such predictions. We've uh, used the word cautious optimism. Uh, we don't want to get ahead of ourselves. Do you think guys realize that this is a different Steve Spurrier? I think so. I think I, there's no question about it. I think we're a little bit smarter than we were last year, but only time will tell if we are. Well, certainly very forthcoming. Mark, good job. Big question, million dollar question here in Washington. It's more than a million dollars. Can Steve Spurrier win in the NFL, guys? Hey, Steve, look, what do you there's think? There's no question. The guy's a different cat. I mean, when it comes to coaching, he does a lot of things that are really weird, and the guys aren't used to it. But the bottom line is he has a unique system, and in that system, it needs specific personnel and an, and an emphasis on speed, and it takes time. And we always talk about new coaches having kind of a three-year plan, but we judged him right off the bat because we saw, talked so much about his offense and so much of what, what, he, what he's going to do. Well, now he's got more speed. He got Chad Morton, he got Lavernius Coles, he got the guys that he really wanted, and now he's got to start to show it. So judge, I think, but Steve Spurrier, oh, hold, Steve, hold Steve, up, no, hold up. Okay, judge okay, Steve okay, Spurrier okay, okay. more this year, and even more next year. Give him that chance, but that three-year program. Okay, but when he came in the league, now if he just, he came in talking about other guys, talking about that Jim Haslick fella. What does he know? Putting in 18 hours, and that stuff doesn't work. And, and it was a slap in the face to the guys <laughs> yeah. like me, That's like right. Tom, That's the guys right. that have worked in this league and knows what it takes to win and has put in the hours to win. So, hey, he's got to hey, take his medicine. He might have some success now, but did he not set himself back by bringing in all those No gators? question. This is like his rookie season. Will he have the kind of success that they expect this he, second year? I say the answer Again, is no. he made a lot of mistakes. 
mistakes, but let's look. Hey, wait. This offense, there's been unique offenses that came in. It took a little while. In, De in Tampa, we know the West Coast takes a year. We know that things take a year. You can't just jump in. Marty Schottenheimer, he inherited this team from Marty Schottenheimer. Smash mouth, grounded out, tough right. guys. Right. It's a whole right. different group of people, and it's going to take time to purge that. So, hey, look, he's weird. He's different. He does a lot of strange stuff, but in the end, you got to give the guy a chance with his personnel. He's starting to get it, and then judge him. He had his personnel last year, all his personnel from Florida. That didn't do no, 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 that was just patchwork. That's more. a patchwork oh, mandate. No, 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 no. Patchwork. You're looking at Tron Candidate. You're looking at Lavernius Coles. You're looking at a lot of young guys. I think that they are as unproven as their coach. It will be a wait-and-see situation as Absolutely. this gets started. Let's see how it goes. You know, it's been a while. 91 was the last Super Bowl with Joe Gibbs. Norv had him in the playoffs once, but... It, it's been a dozen of pretty quiet years. <laughs> That's really it's actually not going to take much rest. to get everybody excited here. I mean, a win tonight, and it'll be all forgotten. Oh, I can yeah. promise you that. And a loss tonight, and it'll never Oh, be boy, it'll oh, be on the way to oh. trouble. You, you'll, you'll, they'll be testifying instead of you in the show. <laughs> yeah, there's no more skipping meetings for uh, golf. <laughs> Lavernius Coles, one of the guys that Coach Spurrier and owner Daniel Snyder hope will really juice up the offense starting with tonight. Ahead on Countdown. Did your favorite team miss the playoffs last year? Fear not. We're about to tell you which teams have the best chance of going from worst to first, and maybe even to the Super Bowl. And speaking of dark horse teams, how about them Cowboys? Our guys give the boys a win total. Next. Your compliments keep coming in. Whoever came up with that format, I absolutely applaud them for watching outstanding football. Your passion for the game makes the show a success. There's no question about it. Africa deserves to have the World Cup. I love your fair and down-to-earth comments. I think golf should be the way you decide match over a season. You guys rock. For Tommy and Eddie, I'm JP. We'll see you next week on Press Pass. Fridays on ESPN. The truest test of strength, stamina, and character. ESPN presents the International Ironman Triathlon. Top athletes in endurance sports compete around the globe on the most demanding courses ever. The Ironman Triathlon World Championship on ESPN. Thrill of the race. ESPN has all the speed you desire, and we serve it up fast. Speed thrills on ESPN. They bring home the dream team, a gas to watch. If you're telling me I look like Will Bond, I just got a really bad opinion of myself. This is the best show on television. Pardon the interruption. Of sports and other stuff on ESPN. There's a place where great ones face off. A place where strength is measured. A place to be considered the best. A place the UEFA Champions League. The search for the best of the best. Starts September 17, only on ESPN. <laughs> so Spike Lee's got Joe's jersey on. All right, I got it. Joe Willie and Spike <laughs> Lee. Well, this, we're getting ready for some football, that's for sure. In uh, the NFL these past few seasons, it, it seems if you're not a dark horse, there's no way you can make it to the Super Bowl. All right, last year, more to form. The Bucks beat the Raiders. We knew they would both be good. But the year before, the Patriots, they came from nowhere. The year before that, 
the Ravens and the Giants. They came from far back. And in 1999, the Rams and Titans were shocking Super Bowl teams. Atlanta the year before that. So here in 2003, who are the legitimate dark horses? The list gets longer every year. Dark horse, dark horse. Morgan picks it off. A marvelous effort by the Panther defense. The dark horses. If you're looking for a team to come from off the pace, look no further than the Panthers. Following a 1-15 record in 2001, head coach John Fox led Carolina to a 7-9 record last year, including four wins in their last five games. Their defense finished the season ranked second overall, and that was partly without Julius Peppers, who was suspended for four games. His 12 sacks in the 12 games he played earned him Defensive Rookie of the Year honors. Without a marquee quarterback, Carolina gets help in the backfield with the addition of running back Steven Davis. That should allow the Panthers to control the clock and let the defense dictate the game. Reese Holmes, Reese Holmes, Reese Holmes. Diving for the end zone. Touchdown, Kansas City. With a healthy Priest Holmes, there is little doubt that the Chiefs will be able to move the football. Much like the Rams and Raiders, Kansas City can spread the field, single out favorable matchups, and strike quickly at any time. With a solid offensive line and veteran quarterback Trent Green at the helm, the Chiefs will have no problems putting points on the board. The problem for Kansas City is with their defense, which finished the 2002 season ranked dead last in total D. But the offseason acquisitions of linebacker Sean Barber, defensive end Bonnie Holiday, and quarterback Dexter McLeon should improve their athleticism and range. And the Ravens are the champions of the world. Hallelujah! It seems like ages ago that the Ravens were Super Bowl champs, but after two seasons of rebuilding, they now appear to be playoff contenders once again. Despite having 18 rookie or first-year players on their roster in 2002 and losing Ray Lewis for five games, Baltimore still managed to finish 7-9. But this year, Lewis is healthy, and the Ravens have arguably the best linebacking core in football. While offensively they have major questions at quarterback and wide receiver, the offensive game plan will include lots of Jamal Lewis, thereby controlling the clock and letting the defense set the tone, much like they did in 2000. All right, the greatest star, of course, we're looking at the movie this year, Seabiscuit. Who's this year's Seabiscuit, Tommy? Uh, the Baltimore Ravens. I think that really? feature pointed that out. They bit the bullet on free agency. Ray Lewis is back. He is going to make Kyle Bowler comfortable. When he makes a mistake, he's not going to have to pay for it all the time. I'm taking the Minnesota Vikings. They won the Ooh. last three games of 2002. Dante Culpepper gets his money this offseason. Hey. Now he knows it's my football team. Look for Minnesota. Now, that's back. a dark horse. Yeah. I think another dark horse to maybe crack the playoffs. That's a Seattle Seahawks. Mm -hmm. A lot of good personnel that came from Mike Holmgren, a lot of pressure on him. I also like, not just crack the playoffs, but maybe go all the way. Your Denver oh, Broncos, yeah, Tommy. Yeah. I really Broncos. believe that things can get rolled. Jake, 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 Jake well, no question, but year. they have some great personnel, and they could, if they not just crack the playoffs, I think they could just go all the way. That's right. Dark Horse, San Diego Chargers. Yes. Everyone's looking at Kansas City in that division. Maybe Denver is Oakland. San Diego, late in the year. They're finally going to have a good late in the year. All right. The Dallas Cowboys. Team you know some about. <laughs> Billy Parcell sat here with us at this show and all year last. Are they still playing? How many wins will Dallas get? Hey, you know what, guys? I see Dallas with at least seven wins this season, and that, that should be a successful season. Now, you guys are smiling yeah, like... Five last are, year, are, right? you, you, are you saying the best coach, one of the best coaches of our time, is not worth two wins? Well, we just discussed it. Ah! It takes a coach a little while to purge what he saw as maybe That's a right. pretty That's horrible right. group right. of people that don't fit his bill. I think he was shocked when he got down there and actually looked at everybody's like this is going to take some time so that being said five six wins is going to be a nice I, season I, I think five wins would be a good season looking toward the next year I'm, i love him i'm setting the bar low anything yeah. you get above that you did it we're setting him up for success aren't we not doing That's dallas it. hey when he, he goes to the playoffs we like go oh, bill we're not doing Bill's dallas. second year has always been the bellwether right. for year. him right that's right well i don't know how i don't know how do you win eight game nine games of that quarterback situation it's gonna be tough, it's gonna be tough. Well, I mean, look, the, the, you know one thing, they're going to be a lot more organized in this division that the Reds Oh, yeah, they're going to have some... They're going to be no walkover, that's for sure. Yeah. Any Coach other Parcell, any other team? And Coach Parcell's going to win some games that you don't expect them to Here's win. a team. Period. Here's that's a team we got to mention. Got to mention them, <laughs> Tom. <laughs> Buffalo. Yeah, circle the wagons. No one circles the expatriates like the Buffalo Bills. That's They signed them all. We'll be back <laughs> to give you Super Bowl picks and more here at FedEx Field.
<laughs> we're almost ready for kickoff. But first, we're going to show you what it's like to be a Jet. You really feel sorry for yourself when you're out of the league, sitting watching TV, and say, hey, man, I had three opportunities to go to the Super Bowl, three opportunities to get in the playoffs, and I didn't do it. And the Jet and Skins start their season tonight. But who's going to be there at the end? Stick around for our Super Bowl picks. Next. In the ring, it's one-on-one -on -one action. Your hands are your only weapon. Your body, your opponent's target. And in any moment, your brain will tell you it's time to take a nap. Top-rate boxing every week on ESP. Warriors of the NFL return to ESPN for another season of American football. The New York Jets are ready to soar, and they'll look to veteran Vinny Testaverde to pilot the team. And the Washington Redskins are looking to turn their fortunes around and make a playoff run. With a roster filled with former Jets, the opening game of the season has all the drama that is the NFL. The Jets and the Redskins, live today, the NFL on ESPN. Sunday, NFL Countdown, presented by Old Spice. Spice things up. And in part by Coors Light, the official beer sponsor of the NFL. Cold down easy. And the next Ford F-150. This Sunday, we kick off our 17th season of Sunday Night Football. The rematch of the AFC Championship game, Rich Gannett, the Raiders. Steve McNair, the Titans in Tennessee. Sunday, following NFL primetime at 8.30 p.m. Primetime at 7.30. You don't want to miss that. So, the Jets lose quarterback Chad Pennington for two and a half months. Here we go again with the Jets. Sell the tickets. For only Herm Edwards, it was what me worry? When they wrote the book on optimism, the Jets head coach was a full chapter. His upbeat approach is in large part responsible for his two years in the playoffs and two tries as head coach and his November combined record, five and three over two years. December combined record, six and two over two years. With a rare look inside last year's team meetings, Andrew Kramer gives us a look at the method behind the motivation. The good Lord is shining down on us because he's still giving us a chance. He's a very zealous guy. He said, you know, screw it up. You screw it up seven times, I'm going to give you a chance. I'm going to give you one more chance. You ever watch Oprah and you see Dr. Phil? He's like a, you know, a football Dr. Phil. Now, we can all sit here and feel sorry for ourselves and say, well, you know, go ahead. Feel sorry for yourself. When you listen to him, you say, that really makes sense. And, you know, maybe I should think of it that way. And, and, and you know, and it clicks. It's like he makes the light click on in your head. To really feel sorry for yourself when you're out of the league, sitting watching TV, and say, hey, man, I had three opportunities to go to the Super Bowl, three opportunities to get in the playoffs, and I didn't do it. Herman Edwards has been called a preacher in coaching shorts. He approaches his players with a missionary zeal that epitomizes his life. Each day when he enters his office, there are reminders of the themes he emphasizes. Every morning I walk in here, I look at him, and I read him, and I make sure that I understand, hey, it's not a cliche. It's not something to say, but it's something to do. And I, and I believe, you, you know, you, you do what you say. And, and for me, that's very, very important. Edward says his speeches aren't scripted, but they often contain references from Life's Lessons, a book he made which is filled with principles he lives by. He also recounts personal stories, like the one about sweeping the corners, 
symbolized by this statue of a man with a broom. It's a constant reminder of a lesson taught to him by his late father, Herman Edwards Sr., an Army Master Sergeant. He says, no matter how successful you ever are in life, he says, never be afraid of this broom. And broom always illustrates to me hard work and doing the details, doing the corners, because the little things make the big things happen. He always talks about, um, you know, make sure you clean the corners, which means take care of all the details. I mean, he learned that from his dad. Don't you want to see how it feels again to win? Damn. Don't you just want to just do that so I can just say, you don't have to come in Monday? Don't you want that feeling just one time again just to see what it feels like? Damn. Holy smokes. I think as a player sitting there, what draws you in is the fact that he's throwing you a bone. Help me to help you. That's one of his favorite phrases. When we're coming to a team meeting, nobody's kind of like, well, I don't want to go. Herman got to talk about a day. Everybody's like, well, what, what's Herman going to surprise with today? Things like that. You know, he, he keeps us alive in meetings. He keeps us wanting to come back to meetings. While players said they felt motivated just watching Edwards on tape, the coach said he's never before seen himself address his team. What's that like to watch yourself? I didn't know I said damn so much. I got to watch my language. <laughs> my mom would be mad at me. You gotta wanna fight these guys. And if you don't, then shame on you. Cause that's embarrassing what happened to us. And we're all a part of it. And men, we ain't letting that happen to us. We're a better team than that. What's going through your mind as you're before them? That we needed to fight. That we needed to compete. To live up to our ability. There's one thing in life you can always do. You need to try to overachieve. See, people sometimes think overachievement is you don't have any talent or, or you're not good at something. Overachievement means that you've used everything you can, every, every ounce of fiber you have in your body to accomplish something. Why are you getting emotional? It's, 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 it's the passion that you have and the things that football has taught me as a man. I think that's very, very important. And that's what I'm trying to teach these guys. The will to get tested tomorrow. And when it gets tested, don't blame. You just fuck. Your dad was sitting Play in one of your game. team meetings. <laughs> what do you think he would game. say about his son? Good question. I would think he would, I would hopefully he'd be proud of me. The thing that he taught me early, probably the best thing he ever told me, he said, uh, we don't have a lot of money. He said, but one thing I'm going to give you is a good name. He said, don't screw it up. Hopefully, I haven't screwed it up. Hopefully, I haven't screwed it up. Oh, wow. Thank you, Adrian. A, quite a look at a very special guy, Herm Edwards. Mort, uh, your final thoughts here as we get set to kick off this season. Well, let's get Rush's final thoughts and Super Bowl picks. Rush? I got to go, the New England Patriots. And I, I, I think the Tampa Bay Buccaneers is the best shot to repeat that we've had in uh, two or three years. You know, Mort, there's nothing like this. This is opening day. It's like the Super Bowl here in Washington. There's no other sport whose regular season counts like this. And I hope it never changes. Well, I like the Rams, and I think the Patriots help the Bills. They're circling the wagon, Steve Young. Uh, come on, you got to be kidding me. Uh, hey, Tampa Bay, they got all the demons out of the way. They got to be the favorite to go back to Houston. But I think they'll play the other team that has given up on the, essentially given up on the color orange, and that's the Denver Broncos, I think, can go the distance. Well, I like Tampa Bay also, and I like them over Tennessee. But watching that Herm Edwards piece right there that makes was. me want to pick the New York Jets. I just can't do it, Herm. I love you, baby, but not. I can't pick the Jets. Yeah, I, I've got Tampa Bay as well. I think they have a great chance to repeat, and I think the Tennessee Titans, Jeff Fisher just gets the most out of that football team. I think they end up in the Super Bowl as well, but the Bucks win the game. Well, the common thought is that the Eagles lost too much. I, You know what? I go with coaching and a guy that has a plan. And so I'm going to go with Philadelphia to knock on the door one more time to straight NFC Championship games against the New England Patriots. Uh, two guys, Belichick and Reed, I think they know what they're doing. <laughs> on to tonight, all right? Which team gets off on the right foot? You know, if you win a game like this, and I remember last year, Steve Mariucci and the 49ers flew all the way across the country. They get a win, and then you have a win in like a semi bye week. I mean, it's really you know, a nice start to the season. Yeah, and Steve Spurrier's got a lot of things in place. He's got this talent now that he's got. He's got a young quarterback. If they can get started and get on a roll, they're a team that can start to maybe contend towards the end of the season. The Jets, on the other hand, are hurt. 
Their egos are down. They've got a lot of crushed What's souls. I think they really want to come back. This is a big game for the Jets. Wounded dogs will fight. Yeah, they so will. look for them to fight. I just don't see how the Jets can move the ball. What are they going to run Curtis Mart? What are the um, Redskins? They're going to stack the line of scrimmage with everybody, play man to man outside, and the Redskins will win this game. Right, which is why I'm going to end this show the way I began it. The Skins cannot lose this football game. They have to win this game, or it will leave more than a sour taste in their mouths. Well, we'll find out very shortly as the kickoff is on ABC's Monday Night Football on Thursday night. We're here every Every Sunday for two hours starting at 11 a.m. Eastern. You've seen the gang, and we've got more in store for you. And don't forget primetime every Sunday at 7.30 Eastern. For Tom and Michael and Steve and Rush and Mort and Sal and Albus, I'm Chris Berman. Have a great season. From just outside Washington, D.C., the 2003 NFL season begins tonight on ESPN. A special Thursday night opening game between the New York Jets and the Washington Redskins. I'm Mark Brown. I'll be with you throughout from our ESPN studio. And as always, Al Michaels and John Madden will have the call from FedEx Field in Landover, Maryland, with a little help from Lisa Guerrero. Week one of the National Football League begins now on ESPN. The New York Jets hoped the 2003 season would be an opportunity to play for the Lombardi Trophy. But a preseason nightmare has softened those hopes and leaves their dreams in the hands of 39-year-old Vinny Testaverde. The Washington Redskins have made more additions trying to spark Spurrier's fun-and-gun regime. Lavernius Coles was swiped away from the Jets and will be called on to be their primary scoring threat. And if Patrick Ramsey is the answer to their quarterback problems, then the Skins can be a player in the NFC East. It's the kickoff of the 2003 NFL season next. Every NFL game is of critical importance to each team's playoffs, but tonight's game has a little extra flavor of the Redskins having lured four New York Jets starters this offseason through free agency. Tonight, we're going to see if those moves pay off or if the Jets simply make the Skins pay. The opening kickoff is coming up next on ESPN. taste of strength, stamina, and character. ESPN presents the International Ironman Triathlon. Top athletes in endurance sports compete around the globe on the most demanding courses ever. The Ironman Triathlon World Championship on ESPN. ESPN's Friday Night Fights. The NABF middleweight title is on the line when Canadian Kinsley EKK goes for his 18th victory against Kenny Ellis. Championship Boxing, tonight on ESPN. ESPN welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. He didn't expect to be in this position, but 39-year-old Vinny Testaverde will be the Jets' starting quarterback tonight when they take on the Washington Redskins on opening night of the 2003 NFL season. One year ago, Testaverde was the established Jets starter, but very quickly, Vinny's performance and that of the team went downhill. The offense wasn't going anywhere as Vinny and offensive coordinator Paul Hackett were at odds 
in the West Coast offense. The Jets stumbled out to just a one and three start before Vinny lost the starting job to up and comer Chad Pennington, who led New York to the AFC title and the second round of the playoffs. And the sum of Testaverde's statistics add up to put him among some of the top quarterbacks of all time. Nearly 40,000 yards passing, 200 and 44 touchdowns but only six times in 16 seasons has he thrown more TDs than interceptions and generally he just hasn't won enough here's that flavor we've been talking about the New York Jets lost Lavernius Colt their leading receiver last year as an unrestricted free agent at the hands of the Washington Redskins Coles caught 89 balls for over 1200 yards over 14 yards per catch and five touchdowns. Good numbers, but a seven-year, $35 million contract was given Coles, including a reported $13 million signing bonus. But he was just one of four Jet starters who goes over to now start for the Washington Redskins. Kick returner and running back Chad Morton, place kicker John Hall, and starting right guard Randy Thomas all have defected from the Jets to the Skins. So all that plus the opening night of NFL season here on ESPN. The Jets and Redskins getting ready to kick off in just a moment here on ESPN. Speed. Do you crave the hair-raising thrill of the race? has all the speed you desire and we serve it up fast speed thrills on espn Super Speed Month on ESPN. The IRL IndyCar Series races on. First, the Chicagoland Speedway hosts the Chicago Indy 300. Then, the best pilot space offer glory at the California Speedway for the California Indy 400. Scott Dixon, Tony Kanaan, Jill DeBaron, Helio Castroneves, and others will battle to the end. The IRL in September, only on ESPN. The New York Jets and Washington Redskins getting ready to do battle at FedEx Field and land over Maryland in the opening night of the NFL season. We've got it for you here on ESPN. The Jets coming in off a 9-7 and seven season in which they won the AFC East and then beat Indianapolis 41-0 in the playoffs before losing to eventual AFC champion Oakland in the next round. The Redskins, on the other hand, were 7-9 and nine last, ye last year and are looking to improve on that. Their starting quarterback, which has always been in question under now second-year coach Steve Spurrier, Patrick Ramsey is in as the starter, and he has some new toys to play with this year. For now, we're going to step aside as we get ready for the opening kickoff. To the Jets last year are now Redskins. You've lost Chad Pennington until November. How are you going to compensate for these losses? What do you tell your players? Well, we get to play with 11, and uh, that's what we need to do on uh, all sides of the football, as well as special teams, and uh, that's what the team understands. Coach Vinny Testaverde told us yesterday that he's not 100% comfortable coming into this game. He's only had 21 snaps in the preseason. Have you had this plan especially for that? No, well, Vinny doesn't have to do it by himself. Uh, we gotta, we have to help him with our offense as well as our defense and teams. And uh, Vinny just needs to function as a quarterback and don't turn the ball over. And uh, we got to play good defense and good specialty. Thanks very much, Coach. I appreciate it. Good luck this year. Al Herman Edwards becomes the first head coach to try to take his team to the playoffs for three consecutive years. It's amazing to think about that, Lisa, because the Jets have been in existence since 1960 came into the American Football League as the Titans. Doug Bryan, 
who is the man replacing one of the departed Jets, John Hall, who comes to the other side. Brian's much traveled. He's been around four different teams. Chad Morton, one of the Jetskins, one of the four who's come south. Ready to return the kickoff. Crowd on its feet. About 85,000, and the 2003 season is underway. At the seven-yard line, it begins with Chad Morton coming up past the 20 and then taken down at the 29-yard line, and we begin with a penalty. The officiating crew is headed by referee Walt Coleman. And that's against the Redskins, and that will take them back. So Morton had gotten out to the 29-yard line. It's a hold, and with Patrick Ramsey coming Third into the game. Holding, 24 of the return team, 10-yard penalty, first down. And that's going to take them back to about the 14-yard line. Penalty was on Champ Bailey. You know, one of the things as a, as a coach, I would say we want the ball and you all take the ball, but if you had your choice and it wasn't the choice of the flip of the coin, you said, would you really rather start on defense or start on offense? I would always rather start on defense because your guys are all fired up and they're all excited, and I think you want your defense being excited more than your offense. I think return teams and holding and those types of things happen on that first play. That's a hard call to make, though, if you're a head coach to say, I'm going to give it up no, at the no, outset. No, I would never Foul give it up. Play. The holding was on the kicking team player, not the receiving team player. First down. Well, that's interesting. They take it back. On a penalty, supposedly to Champ Bailey, but what he meant was 24 on the other side. That's Ray Mickens. So you saw the consternation on the face of Spurrier behind the ever-present card, and now the consternation belongs to Herm Edwards. Yeah, what I meant is, is if you if you win the toss, you have to take the ball. But before you have the toss, you say, this, this is what I hope would happen. I think I'd rather kick off. So a stuttering beginning, six seconds into the game. The ball is at the 29-yard line, and here is the man supplanting Stephen Davis in the backfield. That's Trung Kennedy, who picks up about four. It comes over from St. Louis, and let's take a look at the Redskin unit. Patrick Ramsey, Tulane. Trung Kennedy, Arizona Wildcats. Brian Johnson, Boise State. The running is Coles, Rebalt Senior High School. Rod Gardner, Clemson Tigers. Saron Flemister, Iowa Hawkeyes. Chris Samuels, Alabama. Dave Fiore, Hofstra. Larry Moore, BYU. Brandon Thomas, Mississippi State. John Jansen, Michigan. Second down and seven. That was an interesting little bit of byplay from Lavernius Coles as Kennedy takes it up past the 35 to the 38. And let's quickly take a look at the Jets' defensive starters. Sean Ellis. Tennessee. Dwayne Robertson, University of Kentucky. Jason Ferguson, University of Georgia. John Abraham, South Carolina. Nick Lewis, University of Georgia. Marvin Jones, Florida State University. Samuel Coward, Florida State University. Donnie Abraham, East Tennessee State. Sam Gaunt, University of Cincinnati. John McGraw, Kansas State. Aaron Beasley, West Virginia. On third and short, this is Rock Cockwright who is a fullback playing a tailback in that set behind Johnson, and he picks up the first down. And, John, just to finish up with Lavernius Coles, when a guy tells you what high school he went to and not the college, he's not real happy with his college. And, of course, Coles was involved in the scandal at Florida State, was suspended in his last year there, then was drafted by the Jets, and he will not be given any, any tomahawk chops tonight. No, and that's exactly why he came into this league with a chip on his shoulder. and. And he came to Washington Redskins with a chip on his shoulder. But I'll tell you, this guy is a good player. He has speed, and he's a tough guy, too. First and 10 from the 41. And the pass is caught by Brian Johnson, the fullback, who comes out of the backfield for a short game. He's tackled there by Sam Coward. Tulane is not a quarterback factory. In fact, in the history of the NFL, there have only been three quarterbacks out of Tulane. One is Sean King, the backup at Tampa Bay. One was Ken Karcher, who played in the strike replacement games for Denver in 87, and this fellow, the number one pick last year. Yeah, and, and Patrick Ramsey has the arm. I mean, he has a very strong arm. He can get the ball deep down the field, but he has trouble with those short-type passes. Second down and six. And here is Kennedy, who picks up a couple. Maybe one of the reasons he has trouble, John, is because he can't finesse 
the javelin and he was a javelin thrower in high school and college that was an interesting thing Steve Spurrier said you know I wish Patrick Ramsey had been a baseball player you know and he had those you know flip type of thing remember how Derek Jeter flipped that ball against the Oakland A's now he wished that he could do those kinds of things but he wasn't a baseball player and he can't do those flip things and then like you say what other sport did you play you <laughs> threw a javelin well when you have a javelin throw throw a screen pass man you have no idea where that thing's going from the 47 yard line it is third down and four the Redskins opening drive and he goes to a second situation that was Flemister he checked off from his primary target and Flemister is able to pick up the first down in Jets territory tackled there by Abraham and Coward. Yeah, and that's that's exactly what Steve Spurrier was talking about with Patrick Ramsey. He said he knows that he can throw that throw, throw the deep one. He said he wants them to run these check downs, these little checks over the middle, the short ones. Now, if you're going to do that, your line has to short set too, because you're going to throw that short one with a three step drop, and you can't allow any penetration in the middle. Sean Candidate is the man in motion, the X Ram. On the right side now, and there is the first sack for the Jets this season. John Abraham, and that would figure 10 sacks last season. First round draft choice in 2000. First guy to get him. Abraham's a good player, and they and they move him around. They'll put him on the right side. They put him on the left side. Usually on the weak side. Here he is now. He's going to start here, and then he's going to come inside on a stunt. You see the tackle goes out. Here comes Abraham underneath. And you see him coming free straight up the middle. That tackle does a good job of picking off the guard because they were trying to zone pass protect that. Second and 17. Now Ramsey guns one, and there's that arm, and there is Poles making his first catch as a Redskin and a big one on a second and 17 for 25 yards and a first down. This is a way to start it, though. They start off running, and then they start off dominating the line of scrimmage. Watch Chris Samuels here, number six. We saw Abraham get in there the first time. That time, Chris Samuels would put him right on his back. Then when you do those kinds of things, then you give your receiver time to run ins like that. Now Ramsey quickly to the outside to Coles again, slips out of a tackle, and then is taken down out of bounds after a short game broke a Sam Gorn's tackle picks up a couple under 10 minutes to go in the opening period on the opening drive for the Redskins any one thing about this opening drive the Redskins sure have the Jets defense on their heels and they have great mixture I mean they've run the ball they've gone play pass they've gone those short or dump passes they've gone the deep end they've run the screen pass they're bringing out their whole arsenal right off the bat Ramsey has begun four of four for 36 yards. Liddell Betts is the tailback. Fake to him. Ramsey steps up, throws a wobbler, but it's right on target. But the defender, Sam Garns, is able to knock it away from Patrick Johnson on the near sideline. And that's the type of thing that Patrick Johnson can do. I mean, that's a that's a tough throw getting that short corner out there. You see it's a cover two. Corner lets him go to the safety. Now Garns has to pick him up. Ramsey gets that ball in there. That's a pretty good throw, but it was good defense by Sam Garn. And that cover two, he's the safety over the top, and he has to make that play. Now they come up with Chad Morton in the backfield. So Spurrier with all of his new toys and using all of them on this first series. Third and nine from the 28-yard line. Protection starts to break down, and Ramsey's going to go down again. So two sacks on the first drive. This time, Sean Ellis is the first guy to get in there. We are talking to the Jet coaches. If they say that Sean Ellis is finally becoming what they expected, Sean Ellis will line up on this side, Abraham on this side, and now when there's no tight end on his side, he's more of a pass rusher. See, he can just come in there and just bolt and just run right over John Jansen. That's what you call a bull rush, and if you're going to look at a bull rush and say, how do you do it? That's the way you do it. It's an 11-play drive, but still, as they set up for a field goal here, it's going to be a 50-yard attempt for John Hall, but Herm Edwards takes a timeout. Six minutes into the game, Jets nothing, Redskins nothing. Hey, how you guys doing? This is Tony Gonzalez, tight end for the Kansas City Chiefs. 
He supports the United Way by preparing meals at a local community center. Tony has good hands. The kitchen staff knows this. Sorry. Tony Gonzalez. On the football field, he has good hands. Je suis le bon. Seul, je vais sans but. Vers où? Vers quoi? Je suis le Porsche uses HP technology to design the world's most exciting cars, <laughs> making the wind very happy. Tu es si belle. ESPN invites you for another special edition of Sports Center. Tonight we will recap the day in sports, UEFA Champions League, as well as the entire world of sports with all the score, stories, and highlights right here on ESPN. So the Jets and Redskins first quarter action going on at FedEx Field. We get you back out to that right now. And so John Hall, who last made a field goal of 50 or more yards to send the Jets into the playoffs two years ago at Oakland, will attempt a 50-yarder with Brian Barker to hold. Snap good, hold good. And Hall's first kick as a Redskin is good. Washington's opening drive, six minutes, four seconds. And John Hall pays the first dividend for the Jetskins. 3 0 Washington. Show on television. Part of the interruption of sports and other stuff on ESPN. I'm JP Della Camera. Can you believe it? It's time already for World Cup qualifying. At least it is in South America. On our next show, Tommy and Eddie will talk about it. So join us for the next question. Lavernius Coles caught two passes for 26 yards. Ramsey leads them into position for Hall to kick the field goal. And now for the first time in the game, the Jets will get the ball with Hall kicking off. And Albert Johnson with Lamont Jordan back to receive for New York. And it's a bouncing ball that skitters to the nine-yard line. And this is Lamont Jordan, the backup to Curtis Martin, who brings the ball out to the 28-yard line. And that's where Vinny and the Jets take possession with 8.51 left in the opening quarter on opening night. 3-0 Washington. Everybody 
ESPN delivers two of Europe's greatest imports. From Holland, the speed and fury of Dutch football. And the rough and tumble Scottish Premier League. Giants of the game, PSV Eindhoven. Ajax Amsterdam. Feyenoord Rotterdam. As well as old firm rivals, Celtic and Rangers. Experience total football on the channel that gives you the footballing world. ESPN. The engines warm up for a super speed month on ESPN. The IRL IndyCar Series races on. First, the Chicagoland Speedway hosts the Chicago Indy 300. Then, the best pilots face off for glory at the California Speedway for the California Indy 400. Scott Dixon, Tony Kanaan, Jill DeFerrin, Helio Castroneves, and others will battle to the end. The IRL in September, only on ESPN. The Lincoln Memorial on this 70-degree night in our nation's capital where there's been a lot of rain over the last three and a half days, but the field was covered up until 6 o'clock. It has not rained since about 5 o'clock here in our nation's capital area. We're actually in Landover across the Maryland state line. Spurrier going over things with Ramsey as Testaverde, who will be 40 years old on November the 13th, takes over the 28th. And Vinny throws and nearly has that one picked off by LeVar Arrington. What a beginning. You know, that's one thing. LeVar Arrington is a great linebacker, but he's not just a pass rusher or a run stopper. He's also a great pass defender, and he loves to do those kind of things. You know, like linebackers got where they became rush guys. LeVar Arrington wants to be a complete linebacker. And on that play, I think he showed you why. Looked like then he was trying to hit Curtis Conway on a slant. And that's Curtis Martin with a flag thrown at the end of the play at the 30 line. LeVar Arrington makes the tackle. Walt Coleman will tell us about it. Personal foul against Washington. I think we talked earlier about how the personal foul, unnecessary roughness, 26 defense. 15-yard penalty. Ifayani Ojalete, the strong safety. And you're going to see him. He's number 26 there, and he's going to come up. He's right there in the left side. And you just see him right there when he comes in late. You see that late hit? That's the thing. You get so excited on the nice. You, know, you want to hit somebody, you want to hit <laughs> something, but you got to stop when the whistle blows. Good play fake, and then the pass is caught by Gerald Soule, the fullback gain of eight. Let's take a look at the Jets starting offensive 11. Vinny Testaverde, University of Miami. Curtis Martin, University of Pittsburgh. Jill Sol, Tulane. Wayne Krebeck, Hofstra University. Curtis Conway, Southern Cal. Anthony Beck, West Virginia University. Jason Fabini, University of Cincinnati. Dave Zott, Penn State. Kevin Mawai, LSU. Brent Smith, Mississippi State. Kareem McKenzie, Penn State. 40th consecutive start, almost nine worth. On second and two, they give it to Martin on a draw. And Curtis to the 44-yard line. The Jets working against this Washington defense. Bernardo. Jermaine Haley, Butte Junior College. Bruce Smith, Virginia Tech. LeVar Arrington, PSU. Jeremiah Trotter, Stephen F. Austin State University. Chester Armstead. Chan Bailey, UGA. Ifani Ohalefi, Trojans, USC. Matt Bob, Iowa. The State. We're going to have to do these with subtitles pretty soon. That's caught by Crebet, who takes it inside the 35. And the 30, the Fighting Irish, of course, noted PSU Penn State. There was another one in there. We'll, we'll get them all together. 
Well, you know, they watch these Monday night games or Thursday night special of Monday night games, and they know that they're going to have to do that someday themselves when they play them, and they think of how they're going to do it, right. and how they're going to do it better than someone else does, or different from someone else. And then this calls, he gives you his high school as you look at Pennington, and the cat that left a couple of months. First, Martin picks up three, taking it to the 27. Good-looking opening drive for the Jets. Penning, top-rated pitcher in the National Football League last season. Took over as the starter in Week 5. Got them in the playoffs. Fractured that rip at Giants Stadium against the Giants a couple of weeks ago. I think he has seven that rip, and they say 10 to 12 weeks. You know, one of these types of things, you have to give it the full 10 to 12 down and set from the 87 yard line against this man Washington and on a draw it's spin he does spin his way inside 25 where Aldo win makes it up the offensive also doing a good job here of, of you know we're talking about how to come in here and and, and just Even move a little. And in this first series, Paul Hack doing that way. Seven plays, four, five, three have been passes. First, 11 four runs, seven runs. Four. And it goes blitz. He comes around the corner. He's taking out the play, and the ball is caught in the middle. That's the tight First time he gets it up. That's all in the tackle. Ayrton and the and the things one thing get up there and Bosch is a linebacker. He didn't get down in the three point stage, but he covered Will. So in the situation you have to get him up. Then when you get him up, Herm Edwards says we have to we have to keep Vinny clean. the goal and just shot of the 
goal line. Meaning it's fourth down after 13th sets up a fourth and goal inside the one and almost compels you to go for it. And this is a ball for Edwards. You kick the field goal, you go for it. I think he's going to go for it. And I think I would do the same play. No, you don't. You're not going to get down there a lot of time in the game. You're in a hostile environment. And you have a shot right here. You may as well take it. And we're also going to take a timeout. The big is over to talk about this one. Their second timeout with two minutes and two seconds remaining in a good opening period. Opening night. the hair-raising thrill of the race? ESP all the speed you desire, and we serve it up fast. Speed thrills on ESPN. ESPN delivers two of Europe's greatest imports. From Holland, speed and fury of Dutch football. And the rough and tumble Scottish Premier League. Giants of the game. Pierre Eindhoven. Ajax Amsterdam. Feyenoord Rotterdam. As well as old firm rivals, Celtics and Rangers. Experience total football on the channel that gives you footballing world. ESPN. They've been called a dream team. A chance to watch. <laughs> Telling me I look like Will Bond. I just got a really bad opinion of myself. This is the best show on television. Pardon the interruption. Sports and other stuff on ESPN. After the timeout, Herm Edwards and the Jets staff sitting in the play. Fourth down and goal from just inside the one. The Washington Redskins have five defensive linemen in there. You do one of two things. I think you go play action pass or you go quarterback sneak. Heavy formation for the Jets. Jordan is the tailback. They give it to Lamont Jordan. He dives in. Touchdown. That's not a bad play either. That was a heck of a drive. You know, I was talking about Curtis Martin as being the guy, but the Jets really like Lamont Jordan too. I mean, I mean, he's a big guy. He has good moves. He's good in short yardage and goal line. And I'll tell you, one of the keys here, when you get down on the goal line, the offensive line has to get low. You have to get lower than the defense. That jet offensive line, watch them how low they get. Boom, boom, boom. Everyone down, and then he can go up over. Doug Bryan for the point after now. And the Jets wrap up. A 72-yard, 14-play drive. They had the ball almost seven minutes to take the lead. 7-3, New York. In the ring, it's one-on-one -on -one action. Your hands are your only weapon. Your body, your opponent's target. Any moment, your brain will tell you it's time to take a nap. Top rate boxing every week on ESPN. Hello there. Chelsea continue to make waves with their signing. Most of their choices make a lot of sense, and that includes Hernan Crust from the Italian joint Inter. This means that the London side now have one Sebastian Barone to feed the ball to his Argentine teammate. So far, Chelsea have spent close to $150 million to get the dream team, and I guarantee you the spending spree is not over yet. In these days of a depressed economy, I think all this spending becomes a danger to the game. When somebody so rich can spend this kind of money to buy players with no regard to value, it should raise red flags. I ask the question, is there not a danger that players may be bought 
just to keep them out of another team. I think we need to start paying very close attention to this matter. It's a situation that could get out of hand very easily. What do you think? That's what's in the Aulungian bag this week. I'm Tommy Smith with a Y. Week 1 NFL Sunday Night Football on ESPN, a rematch of last year's AFC Championship game. Steve McNair the Tennessee Titans look for retribution against Rich Gannon, Jerry Rice, and the Oakland Raiders on Sunday Night Football. Should be a great one. Don't miss it here on ESPN. Lions kick, fielded at the 7-yard line by Chad Morton. Morton up to the 26 yard line. Victor Hobson makes the tackle. So much made of the offseason transactions. You have Lavernius Coles, the Jets' top receiver last year. There were his figures. Chad Morton ran back two kickoffs for touchdowns on opening day to beat Buffalo. Randy Thomas, an outstanding right guard, helping to cement the offensive line. And then John Hall. Hopefully for the Redskins an end of their kicking woes and so far so good a 50 yarder Now the Redskins on their second drive first down from the 26 yard line Play fake tip and then it's caught by Gardner Rod Gardner who was their number one receiver last year John Abraham tipped it and Gardner able to come up with it for a short game you know, and that's part of that fun and gun is they do throw a lot of screens or quick passes right out to their wide receiver. Now watch John Abraham. He knows that because he knows when the tackle tries to cut him, they're trying to get his hands down. So when the guy goes down to cut you, you put your hands on him, and then the next thing, you put your hands up. Because he's taken away, he's taken away that quick out and that slant out there. Second down and eight from the 27-yard line. Ramsey. Firing up to the 38-yard line. What an arm he has as Lavernius Coles makes the catch for a first down. Yeah, and he can do that part of it. I mean, you know, as you say, he fired it in there, and he has the arm, and I think that's what Lavernius Coles likes about him. I was asking about how he's getting along with Ramsey, and he says, it's not what Ramsey wants. It's, it, it's getting where Coach Spurrier wants you. That's what Patrick Ramsey said, too. It's, it's me throwing the ball where Coach Spurrier wants me to throw it to him. I think they both did what Coach Spurrier wanted on that one. From the 37-yard line, they give the ball to Liddell Betts, and he takes it to the 50. Behind a rock part right block, Liddell Betts was their second-round draft choice last year out of Iowa, 5'10", and goes 2.22, a 12-yard game. And they really like Liddell Betts, too. I think, you know, when they lost Stephen Davis, and you know, people thought they should have kept Stephen Davis because of the rush and everything, one of the reasons that they let him go was because of Liddell Betts. I mean, they got Trunk Candidate, and he's the starter, but they also like Liddell Betts very much in this position. Waning seconds of the first quarter, and they will not get the playoff. Clock ticks down to three zeros. Good quarter, though. At the end of one, the New York Jets lead the Washington Redskins 7-3, and our kickoff special continues after this message and a word from our ABC stations. ESPN goes spanning the globe this September to bring you the world of sports. The UEFA Champions League returns for another thrilling season where the finest clubs battle for the top prize of European football. The IRL IndyCar Series continues with the world's best drivers pushing the fastest open-wheel cars to the limit. The Major League Baseball regular season winds down with the teams fighting for a position in the playoffs. Generation X athletes compete in Asian X Games 5. The legends of golf hit the links in the Champions Tour all month long. The top clubs of Holland hit the pitch for Dutch football. Great action this September on ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. The truest test of strength, stamina, and character. ESPN presents the International Ironman Triathlon. 
top athletes in endurance sports compete around the globe on the most demanding courses ever. The Ironman Triathlon World Championship on ESPN. ESPN brings you the Kroger Senior Classic. Last year, Bob Gilder got his second consecutive win when he defeated Tom Jenkins in the playoff. The Kroger Senior Classic, first round, Saturday on ESPN. Second quarter in Landover, Maryland, opening night. Al Michaels with John Madden and Lisa Guerrero. Good, fast-paced opening period. Each team scoring on its opening drive. And here we go in the second quarter from the 49-yard line. The Redskins down 7-3, to three, first and 10. And Ramsey hands the ball to Betts, who had just picked up the first down at the end of the first period. And a good beginning here behind a Randy Thomas block. Thomas, one of the four former Jets now playing here. Gain of seven. You're right. That was a heck of a block by Randy Thomas. He's, he's a right guard, and they're running the ball to the left. He's going to pull to the left. He's going to start right here, pull here, and be the lead blocker right at the hole. You see, they block down, block down. Here comes Randy right there. It's that block. You knocked the guy right out of frame. Gain of eight, second down, and a long one. And they pull it again. So Betts has carried the ball three straight times. And he crosses the 40-yard line to the 39, and another Washington first down. First quarter, Skins went down for a 50-yard field goal. Then the Jets marched 72 yards for the touchdown. And a big thing when the when the Redskins were marching down, they really had a good drive. And the two things that made them settle for the field goal were those two sacks. First and ten from the 38-yard line. And this time, the Jet defense rises up, and it would figure John Abraham, one of their four first-round draft choices in 2000. You see Patrick Ramsey there. He was really upset with himself because he made an audible at the line of scrimmage, and, and we were talking about the audibles with him the other day, and he says, what we're trying to do, he said, not get into the perfect play. You know, you're not always going to be in the perfect play, but don't get in a bad play. And so he tried to get out of the bad play, which would have been a run to an overload on his right, and he ran it back to the left right into John Abraham. Second down and 12 now from the 39-yard line. Ramsey over the middle. That's caught by Ron Gardner. And Gardner to the 29-yard line. And with Coles here, Gardner, who caught 70 passes last year, I think has an opportunity, even though he's looked at as the number two receiver, to have at least as good a season. Well, and the thing is, is Lavernius Coles really has to help because you have speed on that other side. He has good pass protection. Here's a perfect shot of the pocket. You see, he could have stepped up. He didn't have to, and then he just hit Gardner out there in his right. But, but that, from Skycam, is a perfect way to show the pocket of pass protection. A lot of peas in there. Yes. Third down and two. Here's Chad Morton, and Morton gets dragged down by his former teammate Sam Coward, the ex-Buffalo Bill, close to a first down. One thing about these Redskin offensive linemen, now they can all run. You know, they didn't have a, a good middle of their offense before, and then they, they picked up Randy Thomas, and they got Larry Moore, and they got Dave Fiore from the 49ers. So now they do have a good middle in there, and they've always had two good tackles. I mean, Chris Samuels, to me, number 60 there, is one of the best left tackles in all of football. Crowd is John booing. Jansen is pretty good. I'm sorry. Crowd is booing, John, because they spot the ball just inside the 28. It's not a first down fourth and inches and that's going to be close because that's Liddell Betts it appeared as if they had picked up the first down on the third down play now at least for the moment the yellow line is unofficial but Walt Coleman takes a look at the chains and gives the first down sign and let's check in with Lisa Guerrero Lisa 
Hey, Al, you may have seen uh, Redskin fullback Brian Johnson leave the game at the end of the first quarter. According to the Redskins, it's just a stinger in his right shoulder. He will go back into the game. By the way, he started 12 games of the season last year. He played in all 16, so he is a valuable player to the Redskins, Al. So they await Johnson's return, first and 10 from the 27-yard line, and here is Candidate. A hard-earned three across the 25 to the 24. Yeah, we talked about that middle and how the, the middle of the offensive line has to control the middle of the defense, and they did on that play, you know, because the middle of that offensive line got a push so Trunk Candidate could start to the left and bend it back to the right. And, you know, if there if there is a weakness in this defense now of, of, of the Jets, it looks like they're inside their middle. I mean, I know they're playing a rookie in there, Dwayne Robertson, but and he looks like he could use a little help. Their number one pick, they traded up to get him as the fourth overall pick. And Ramsey throws after a beautiful play fake and hits Robert Royal, the tight end, inside the five. He's tackled by John McGraw. It'll be first down and goal. And McGraw's hurt. And again, it was a perfect call for the situation. You're going to see Robert Royal here. He's a tight end. He's just running a seam route right up through the seam. Now, what they did on that is they caught him on a blitz. And you're going to see once once they blitz and he gets by those linebackers, those blitzing linebackers, he has a wide open run to the safety. See the blitz, you see the pressure right here. Now, now, now from that point on, he's going right to John McGraw. Here's the pressure and the blitz. You see it from the backside and then a delayed blitz straight up the middle. And that middle area, when that was vacated, that's exactly where Patrick Ramsey went with the ball. McGraw, the safety, is the injured Jet. Get in here. This okay. is Vinny Testaverde of the New York Jets. He donates his time to the United Way in his community. Vinny is a magician on the football field. Here, is that your card? Nope. Is this your card? Mm, nope, 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 nope. Well, do you guys know the milk trick? On the football field, Vinny is a magician. Abra Cadabra. September 17, only on ESPN. We were away for almost two minutes, John, and just now did... McGraw begin to sit up, and that's uh, the best sign of all right there. Okay, that is a great sight because when you see this head, you see he's going to lead with his head, but his head is down. And you saw his head and his neck snap, and the way he goes down, that looked like it could have been very serious. And then, as you say, the next best sight is when you see him standing up. But he just put his helmet right on Robert Royal's helmet. And he walks off the field with minimal assistance. See that bruise on the side of his right side of his neck. Yeah, that's probably from the hit when the helmet, you know, pinched against that part of his neck. Contusion. So Tyrone Carter comes in at strong safety, or free safety rather. Carter lines up here, first down and goal from the four-yard line. Liddell Betts is the back. They love to run on first and goal, and they do it here. 
to the two yard line. In fact, you would think of Spurrier as so wide open, but last year the Redskins in these situations ran more on a percentage basis than any team in the league. It was interesting. You brought that up to Steve Spurrier yesterday and you surprised him. I did. He said, Is that right? We do? No. <laughs> he said, Yeah, I guess we do run quite a bit down there. Of course, he's the guy that calls the plays. Make it second most. Atlanta was first, but of course, that means Michael Vick was running with the ball. Should have an asterisk. 13th play of the drive coming, second down and goal from the two. And from Skycam, it is Betts who goes nowhere. Now that's one that the old ball coach probably wished that he would have caught a call to pass on on that one because they were. They were just playing run and waiting for run down there and that's the ideal situation when you get that second and you get them to to play run and then you throw the play action pass. You see Jason Ferguson he's right here now 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 he's what you call a run stuffer. I mean he's going to eat up blockers and stuff runs and that's exactly what he did. He ate up run Randy Thomas and stuffed the run. Now they spread it with four receivers on third and goal and Ramsey throws that one into the back of the end zone for a touchdown. Garnerian McCants touchdown Redskins. That's a heck of a pattern down here. You have one short right at the goal line and one at the end line. We're going to see McCants. He's going to go to the end line. He's the inside receiver. He's here. He's going to go run the back line, and you have one right underneath him, right at the goal line. Again, pretty good pass protection, pretty good pocket. He had a little pressure from his right, but he could step up and make this throw. Ball for the extra point. Well, in the first 21 and a half minutes of the game, Ramsey looks like the second coming of Sonny Jurgensen. He's 9 out of 10. We got an old-fashioned shootout here. Beautiful. 10-7 skins. Your compliments keep coming in. Weber came up with that format. I absolutely applaud him for watching outstanding football. Your passion for the game makes the show a success. There's no question about it. Africa deserves to have the World Cup. I love your fair and down-to-earth comments. I think goals should be the way you decide match over a season. You guys rock. With Tommy and Eddie, I'm JP. We'll see you next week on Press Pass. Fridays on ESPN. ESPN delivers two of Europe's greatest imports. From Holland, the speed and fury of Dutch football. And the rough and tumble Scottish Premier League. Giants of the game, PSV Eindhoven. Ajax Amsterdam. Feyenoord Rotterdam. As well as old firm rivals, Celtic and Rangers. Experience total football on the channel that gives you the footballing world. ESPN. The truest test of strength, stamina, and character. ESPN presents the International Ironman Triathlon. Top athletes in endurance sports compete around the globe on the most demanding courses ever. The Ironman Triathlon World Championship on ESPN. debut of Monday Night Football on ESPN features a rematch of the NFC Championship game. The Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers led by the defense of Warren Sapp go to Philadelphia to take on the Eagles. Opening night of the 2003 NFL season. Good start. Good game to this point. Washington on top 10 to 7. John Hall to kick off to the Jets. Albert Johnson, ex Dolphin, from the four. Now past the 30, good run back up to the 34, and a flag is down. Flag is down at the end of the play. Johnson looking for a face mask call. Concurred. 
So that'll move the Jets out close to midfield. Rashad Bauman is the man who commits the infraction. Personal foul, face mask, 25, kicking team, 15 yard penalty, first down. All right, that's the big old variety. There's you got your two varieties, the five yard variety and the 15 yard variety. This had to be a hold and jerk. <laughs> Chelsea continue to make waves with their signing. Most of their choices make a lot of sense, and that includes Hernan Crespo from the Italian joint Inter. This means that the London side now have one Sebastian Barron to feed the ball to his Argentine teammate. So far, Chelsea have spent close to $150 million to get the dream team, and I guarantee you the spending spree is not over yet. In these days of a depressed economy, I think all this spending becomes a danger to the game. When somebody so rich can spend this kind of money to buy players with no regard to value, it should raise red flags. I ask the question, is there not a danger that players may be bought just to keep them out of another team? I think we need to start paying very close attention to this matter. It's a situation that could get out of hand very easily. What do you think? That's what's in the Al Onion Bike this week. I'm Tommy Smith with a Y. Crave the hair-raising thrill of the race? ESPN has all the speed you desire, and we serve it up fast. Speed thrills on ESPN. Opening night of the NFL on ESPN. The Washington Redskins looking good here about midway through the second quarter. A 10-7 lead over the New York Jets. Patrick Ramsey, a four-yard strike to Darian McCants, has put the Redskins in the lead. Their first touchdown of the season. Now the Jets have the ball out near midfield. Take over at their own 48-yard line on first down and 10 with 8-14 remaining in the first half and on a slant it's Wayne Corbett making the catch and that's a first down you know I was I was watching Wayne Corbett in practice the other day and you know you think of Wayne Corbett you know the smaller guy tough and all these things but I'll tell you what he is really quick and just watching him and just being out there in the field you can feel his quickness and you say where does his his greatness come from as a receiver? And and I do put him in that category sometimes. I think it comes from his quickness. At the 40, Testaverde has started four of six. This is only the second possession for New York. And Curtis Martin picks up three. Martin takes it to the 37. So much was made, of course, about Testaverde and his age. He'll be 40 years old in November. And as you can see, since the merger in 70, no team has gotten to the playoffs with an opening day quarterback as old as Testaverde. Warren Moon was a little younger when he started for Minnesota a few years ago, but Brad Johnson finished that season. And there, of course, is the man the Jets hope will be ready to play maybe by mid-November, hopefully by at least December, Chad Pennington. Second and seven from the 37-yard line, and Vinny going deep over the middle into double coverage and incomplete. Trying to get it in between two defenders to Santana Moss, but the Redskins say no. Jeremiah Trotter, the linebacker, went back to cover along with the safety of Ayani Ojalete. And that's the thing, that, that, that Moss does get on the safety because it's a cover two. And, he, and, and, and you see right there, that's the matchup that they're looking for. And they and he throws the ball and everybody, it's a little low. I mean, I mean, I mean a little slow, a little late. Because if he leads him out there, that could have been a touchdown because Santana Moss did have a step on both of those safeties. Third down and seven now from the 37-yard line. Four-man rush, then he throws, and that's incomplete. Reaching for it was Trebet, but the coverage was good by Bauman. And quickly, let's go to Lisa. 
of the Jets. Free safety number 38, John McGraw, second-year player out of Kansas State. He's out of the game right now. He got knocked in the side of the head. They will be checking him out at halftime. His return is questionable. By the way, he recorded 43 tackles last year as a rookie. And the Jets come into the game with only three safeties. Now the punt by Dan Straczynski picked up in the offseason, punting for the Chiefs last year. And he's able to put some spin on that one. And it's down at the 12 yard line with six minutes and 43 seconds remaining in the opening half. Washington on top by three. Your compliments keep coming in. Whoever came up with that format, I absolutely applaud them for watching outstanding football. Your passion for the game makes the show a success. There's no question about it. Africa deserves to have the World Cup. I love your fair and down-to-earth comments. I think goals should be the way you decide match over a season. You guys rock. For Tommy and Eddie, I'm JP. We'll see you next week on Press Pass. Fridays on ESPN. ESPN goes spanning the globe this September to bring you the world of sports. The UEFA Champions League returns for another thrilling season where the finest clubs battle for the top prize of European football. The IRL IndyCar Series continues with the world's best drivers pushing the fastest open-wheel cars to the limit. The Major League Baseball regular season winds down with the teams fighting for a position in the playoffs. Generation X athletes compete in Asian X Games 5. The legends of golf hit the links in the Champions Tour all month long. The top clubs of Holland hit the pitch for Dutch football. Great action this September on ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. night football this week week one Bucks Eagles what a beauty coming up from the new stadium Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia 9 Eastern 6 Pacific Sunday on ESPN rematch of last year's AFC Championship game Oakland against Tennessee from the 12 now the Redskins begin this drive with Trump candidate picking up three and John I think about you know Thursday night and the opener and how special it is the Redskins were born in Boston they were the Boston Braves and they became the Boston Redskins and when they moved here in 1937 they played their first ever game as the Washington Redskins on a Thursday night with Sammy Baugh at quarterback. Well Sammy Baugh was slinging it then huh? Sammy Baugh. I tell you this is a great place to come. Remember we used to come to RFK and the place always bounced and it's one of the few places that still has a band and, and there is something about that that opening night football and a, and a football band goes together. Hail to the Redskins and hail to Ramsey hitting Laverne is cold with a deep ball down the right sideline and into Jets territory. And he's out of bounds at about the 37-yard line. And when Daniel Snyder's paid all that money in the offseason, that's one of the things he paid for. Steve Spurrier's offense and needed speed. And he got speed. Ramsey does a great job here of getting away from the rush. He ducks a rush. He gets underneath Mo Lewis. And then he makes the perfect throw to the earliest ball. But Ramsey has to make that thing. He has a free rusher on that side to be able to duck under it, get back up, and make a throw like that. That's pretty good. Donnie Abraham with the coverage ball at the 37-yard line on first down. Back to the ground they go. Back to Trunk Kennedy, who's tackled by Mo Lewis inside the 35-yard line. Daniel Snyder, before the game, he says, I'm nervous, I'm anxious, I don't know, what do you think? How's my team? How do the Jets look? <laughs> yep, and I think that his team is going to depend a lot on how Patrick Ramsey plays. I mean, their their defense has to improve a little. I mean, they have to get a little better there. They have LeVar Arrington. They have two shutdown corners. They need a couple of tackles inside. But I think offensively, they have all the things if this quarterback can do it. Second down and seven from the 34-yard line. Take the bets on the draw. Guns it over the middle of the 12-yard line, and it's Coles making the catch to the 12-yard line. Jones and Carter 
in on the tackle. And already Lavernius Coles in his Redskin debut has caught five passes for 106 yards. And the fans love Lavernius Coles, and he loves the big play. And you see, it's just a zone. He just gets right in there. Here's Daniel Snyder saying, yeah, that's my guy. That's my guy. Both of them, both the thrower and the catcher. $13 million signing bonus. Get him out of New York. Get him in here. Tremendous first half for him. To the ground they go again. Running into the left side is Liddell Betts inside the 10 race tackled by Sam Coward. Yeah, I was watching Steve Spurrier down here in the sideline, and he was like he was doing jumping jacks. I don't know. He's trying to get someone off and someone in. Now I think he has it, but I think I think what happened is he wanted a different formation set down there than he got on that first down. Steve thinking, hey, this is like Gainesville. I know he loves this, and I'll tell you, there's there's no head coach in football that works more with his quarterbacks and receivers than Steve Spurrier. Second down and five from the seven. Ramsey a spin around and nobody open there, so he just packs it in and Sean Ellis sacks him. I think they were trying to throw a quick one out there to Lavernius Coles, and if he throws it, it would have been intercepted. I think he realized it, and instead of throwing an interception, he just did a spinner. Virginia Ramsey, Patrick's wife. Ramsey's from Louisiana. Patrick grew up in Ruston, went to school to Tulane. Time out is called by Washington. You know, one thing that Ramsey has going for him is he is a Valentine's Day baby. Born in 1979, and what does that mean? Well, take a look at this. Jim Kelly, Drew Bledsoe, and Steve McNair, who have been to six Super Bowls amongst them, were born on February 14th. Of course, none of them officially got kissed because they were only six collectively. But are you saying then, then that that means because he was born on Valentine's Day, like these other quarterbacks, that he will also be in the Super Bowl and if, lose? If you're like Georgia Frontier and you believe in astrology, I, I guess so. What would that be? Is that Aquarius? Whatever it is. Yeah, I don't. I don't know about that. I. I think that. Uh, you know, it's one of those things that. That. Being being born on Valentine's Day, you never get a birthday. You know, I mean, you know, when you're born on a holiday, then that holiday will overcome your birthday. You know, like everyone's saying, we're celebrating Valentine's Day. We're doing this. Well, hey, wait a minute. I got a birthday. The kids have always felt the sorriest for the kids born on October 31st. On Halloween. Right. December 25th isn't bad that, either. That's true. Yeah. This <laughs> isn't bad, isn't good, is what I mean. Right. Third down and six. After the timeout, the ball is at the eight yard line against the four man New York front. Under pressure throws. Betts makes the catch, but he had to come back to get it as it floated in, and Ray Mickens makes the tackle. So now. It is fourth down, and that will compel the field goal unit to come in, and John Hall comes out onto the field. Yeah, and that's what they've been working on Patrick Ramsey on. If you, if you don't have it downfield, then then go to your, your, your short guy, your dump-off guy, but you hate to go to your dump guy on third down. I mean, that's a, a, a good situation to do on first down. It's good on second down. It's good on third and short, but you hate to leave this situation throwing a check down. Hall is a rookie, as you saw in 97, a 55 yarder in his first game. This is a 22 yard attempt. Earlier, he had a 50 yarder. And this one is just good. Hooked it a little bit, but got it inside the left upright. And Ramsey has done 12 of 13 for 156 yards. As we approach the two minute warning of the first half, the Washington Redskins are leading the New York Jets 13 to 7. And this Monday Night Football kickoff special is being brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Coming up at halftime, Sports Center in game. Couple of Major League Baseball games to get you caught up on, and some news from the NFL and Formula One. The other thing is, is, is there's, there's a band up there, a good old pro band, but 
I don't remember the Redskins ever wearing white on white uniforms. And in all the games that we've done over the years, I know the you know the burgundy uh, jerseys with the uh, white pants or the white jerseys with the burgundy pants. But I don't remember ever seeing this uniform on the Washington Redskins. And it's just canvassing a few people here. Nobody around these parts can remember it. Because they came out for the pregame warm-up, and I was wondering. I said, "There's, there's something different. <laughs> I have, I've never seen. I, I've seen, you know, everything else around it. You know, kind of looks like Redskins, but the uniforms look like something I've never seen before." Kick off by Hall. Does that get in? No, it doesn't get. In. Had it gone an, another yard or so, it would have been a touchback. Instead, it comes out to the 40s. So that's going to cost them 20 yards. Now, he threw the flag. Is he going to be overruled? Play. We have a touchback. All right. So the official who's right there, when he throws the flag, that indicates it's out of bounds before it got to the goal line. But now they say no. On September 18th, you'll meet a team under direct orders from the president with only one mission. That's to keep us all safe. A new drama called Threat Matrix. It's on ABC beginning Thursday, September 18th. It starts at 8 Eastern and Pacific, 7 Central time. FedEx Field is the largest stadium in the league in terms of capacity. It holds close to 86,000. And as you know, John, they hope to have a Super Bowl here someday. Right. And I think they also make more money than anyone in the NFL, don't they? And they might be the most valued franchise in the NFL as well. Close to a billion dollars. From the 20, this is Martin. And, of course, the only way you get up to a billion is you, you have to own your own stadium. And you got what they call the whole enchilada, don't you? Right. You know, Curtis Martin's a different guy. Last year, he had two bad ankles. And, and he just kind of toughed out through the whole season. He just rested in the offseason, and he's very healthy now. Second and five, and that pass is incomplete. Good tight coverage by Arrington that time. Blanketing Anthony Beck to tight end third and five upcoming. Yeah, you were talking the last time the Jets had the ball about Vinny Testaverde and no quarterback 40 years old. And so when they told Vinny that, uh, did you see what he said? He said, you know, at one time he said uh, some people thought the world was flat, too. <laughs> he doesn't look 39 years old. I'm mm -hmm. Good one for me years ago that was in his 40s. That oh, was George Bland, yes. and I'll always believe in him. Close to his 50s. Third down and five. And that is caught by Curtis Conway, who comes over after seven seasons in Chicago and then three in San Diego. And Curtis Conway makes his first catch as a Jet. You watch Vinny in the pocket here, and again, as Herm Edwards says, we have to keep Vinny clean. That is keeping him perfectly clean because if you do that, he can still throw the ball. I mean, that's not going to be a question. Can Vinny Testaverde throw the ball? Vinny Testaverde can throw the ball. Takes us to the two-minute warning. The Jets first down at their own 36 when we come back. On opening night, Redskins lead by six. In the ring, it's one-on-one -on -one action. Your hands are your only weapon. Your body your opponent's target. And in any moment, your brain will tell you it's time to take a nap. Top rate boxing every week on ESPN. NFL return to ESPN for another season of American football. The silver and black attack of the Oakland Raiders invade Tennessee to tackle the Titans. In a return match of last year's conference finals, Steve McNair leads his team against the aging superstars of Oakland. The intensity of this AFC rivalry grows with each encounter. Let the games begin. Raiders-Titans, live Monday, the NFL on ESPN.
With just three races to go, the IRL IndyCar Series Championship is as tight as it can be. DeFerrin, Kanaan, Dixon, and Hornish all within striking distance of points leader Elio Castroneves. Don't miss the Delphi Indy 300 from Chicagoland Speedway. To wrap up week one. One game tonight, 14 on Sunday, and then Bucks Eagles on Monday night. Now Martin picks up a yard. He's tripped up by Jeremiah Trotter. The Jets have one timeout at their disposal. And they're going with a no huddle here. You know, I was talking about Wayne Crevet and, and his quickness. The other thing is he does it on running plays, too. He runs full speed all the time. Second down and nine. Vinny protected well, throws into traffic, reaching up and unable to bring it down is Curtis Conway. Reached up, had it for a second, and then dropped it. Covered by Ipiani Ojalete. In his first half, I would say that Vinny's been pretty successful. He told us last night that what he wants to do is he wants everything to slow down. He said, when you go and practice, he said, things are slower. Then you have game speed. And he said, I'm not used to game speed. So my mind, and I don't know how you do this, but he said, in my mind, I just want to slow things down. And I think, like I said, I don't know how you do it, but I think he's done it. Slowing down father time as well. Vinny in his 17th season. Third and long to the outside, and that's complete, but not enough for the first down. And Santana Moss makes the catch. So they're a couple of yards shy. And they're forced to punt here. And let's see if the Redskins want to conserve some time. They have two timeouts. If I were the Redskins, I would take a timeout now because they're going to get one at change of possession. No question. Maybe they maybe they don't like their field position that they're going to get, but that's why they brought in this guy. So Straczynski to punt, Chad Morton to run it back. And they'll take the play clock all the way down. Play clock now at 10. Yeah, this surprises me. When you have one, you have to use it here. Right. They don't. And the kick is off the side of his foot and out of bounds. Somewhere around, I'm doing, I guess, the 25. They're going to march it off right now. And it's the 23-yard line where they'll line it up. You know, Patrick Ramsey in this first half has done a lot of, a lot of good things. You know, I mean, he doesn't run a lot. He's not a scrambler. But he moves well in the pocket. They want him to throw those short ones. He did that. They want him to, you know, throw those middle ones. He did that. But watch the move that he, I mean, here he gets two sacks in a row. That was the only thing that really stopped him. Watch how he avoids a rush there, makes his throw for the touchdown. And his next run, I think, was a heck of a play. I mean, he gets a free rusher, ducks underneath him, and makes his throw to Lavernius Coles. Some guys can run, they get outside the pocket. Some guys, all you have to do is be able to move a little in that pocket. Now from the 23, and they indicated they're just going to run it out when they didn't take that timeout. And this is Chad Morton up to the 28 yard line. So a half minute remaining, and the Redskins will apparently be content to go in up by six. Yeah, you're right. When they when they didn't take the timeout just before the punt, then that means that they weren't going to take the timeout here. The Spurrier content with a six-point lead. Halftime. Opening night, Washington on top 13-7. So we'll have a halftime show coming up when we return after this message from the National Football League and a word from our ABC stations. You're watching ABC Sports Championship Television. Another chopper down to third. That is a fair ball, bare hand throw. Thomas Paris he keeps on. A run scores, but what a play to get the out. Orlowski gives to Terry Collin. Some room off the far side, still on its feet. Still on its feet. Still on its feet. Still on its feet. Down inside the 10 yard line.
They've been called a dream team, a gas to watch. If you're telling me I look like Will Bond, I just got a really bad opinion of myself. This is the best show on television. Pardon the interruption. Sports and other stuff on ESPN. Sunday Night Baseball on ESPN. The New York Mets are trying to become an obstacle for the Phillies as they look to clinch a postseason bid. The Mets and the Phillies, Monday on ESPN. Okay, Bob, out of the pool. Games come to LA. It's off the hizzle for shizzle dizzle. This is Sports Center in game. We start with Major League Baseball. The Cardinals and the Cubs from Wrigley Field. We go to the bottom of third. Nobody out. Two strikes. Sammy Sosa thinks he has checked his swing, but first base umpire calls him out. And Sosa waving in disgust. But home plate umpire Bill Hahn. It's going to follow Sosa. A couple of words exchanged, and he just tosses him. Sosa can't believe it. Dusty Baker can't believe it. Didn't seem like there was any reason for an ejection there, but in any event, the game went on. To the bottom of the seventh score, tied at six. Two on and one out. Tony Womack gets a hit off Mike DeJean. Moise Alou comes around to score. The Cubs take the 7-6 lead and end up winning by that score. Pirates and Marlins, bottom of the fourth. Juan Pierre at bat facing Solomon Torres. Oh, he hits this one deep to right. First home run of the season. First in 139 at bats, and the Marlins let it one to nothing. In the seventh inning, bottom seven, the score was one all. Miguel Cabrera facing Mike Lincoln. Cabrera, one hit in his last 35, but drives it in and drives in the run, and the Marlins lead it two to one. Next up, Alex Gonzalez. Deep to left field. This goes as a two-run shot to put the Marlins up four to one. The very next batter, Ramon Castro. To almost the identical spot, solo shot makes it 5-1. That was your final. In NFL news, the Bills have reached an agreement in principle on a multi-year deal with free agent safety, Lawyer Malloy. The deal includes a $5 million signing bonus for the value of the first two years of the contract worth just under $10 million. Not all of the details of the contract have been disclosed. Running back Priest Holmes agreed to a four-year contract extension with the Kansas City Chiefs that will keep him with the team through the 2009 season. The seven-year deal in excess of $5 million per year includes a signing bonus of $10 million. In auto racing news, Formula One driver Ralph Schumacher left the Milan hospital last night, a day after his car flipped over during testing at the Monza racetrack. Schumacher plans to return to his home in Austria and is expected to race in the September 14th Italian Grand Prix. He's currently fourth in the driver's standings, 14 points behind his brother, Michael Schumacher. And finally, some good news may be on the way for the New York Knicks. Forward Antonio McDyess's surgically repaired left knee, apparently 90% healed. This according to a source close to McDyess. The same source added that the former All-Star expects to be given clearance to begin practicing by the end of the month and could start the regular season on the active roster. For all of your scores, highlights, and top stories from around the world of sports, tune into Sports Center nightly. At halftime at FedEx Field in Landover, Maryland, NFL opening night on ESPN. The Washington Redskins lead the Jets 13 to 7. We'll have highlights coming up. Thrill of the race. ESPN has all the speed you desire, and we serve it up fast. Speed thrills on ESPN. 
In the ring, it's one-on-one -on -one action. Your hands are your only weapon. Your body, your opponent's target. And in any moment, your brain will tell you it's time to take a nap. Top-rate boxing every week on ESP. of the NFL return to ESPN for another season of American football. The silver and black attack of the Oakland Raiders invade Tennessee to tackle the Titans. In a return match of last year's conference finals, Steve McNair leads his team against the aging superstars of Oakland. The intensity of this AFC rivalry grows with each encounter. Let the games begin. Raiders-Titans, live Monday, the NFL on ESPN. Welcome back to the NFL Halftime Report. Mark Brown with you for now from our ESPN studio. The Redskins looking pretty good in their home opener of opening night on the NFL on ESPN. A six-point lead over the Jets. Let's go back to the first quarter. The Redskins' first drive, second and 17. And they go to newly acquired Lavernius Coles on the crossing pattern. He takes this one for 25 yards down to the 29-yard line of the Jets on the same drive. How about some more former Jets? A 50-yard field goal by John Hall, who was kicking for New York last year. 3-0 Redskins. On the first Jets drive, Vinny Testaverde to Wayne Crobet. Takes it in. The Washington Territory for the first down of the fourth and goal. The Jets decide to go for it. Give it to Lamont Jordan. A one-yard scoring plunge. And the Jets led it 7-3. That was the score at the end of the first quarter. In the second, Patrick Ramsey stepping up and finding Darian McCants. Putting the Redskins up 10-7 with that same score. Ramsey again avoiding a sack. This time going deep. Lavernius Coles for the big score. 48 yards down the right sideline, and that would set up another John Hall field goal. This one from 22 yards to make it 13 to 7 Redskins, and uh, that's where we are at the moment. Patrick Ramsey, a spectacular first half in the fun and gun. He is 12 of 13 for 156 yards and that four yard scoring toss to Darian McCants. So, Lavernius Coles having a great first game against his former team. Five catches, 106 yards, and his skins have the lead over the Jets. goes spanning the globe this September to bring you the world of sports. The UEFA Champions League returns for another thrilling season where the finest clubs battle for the top prize of European football. The IRL IndyCar Series continues with the world's best drivers pushing the fastest open-wheel cars to the limit. The Major League Baseball regular season winds down with the teams fighting for a position in the playoffs. Generation X athletes compete in Asian X Games 5. The legends of golf hit the links in the Champions Tour all month long. The top clubs of Holland hit the pitch for Dutch football. Great action this September on ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.
working our way to the start of the third quarter. The Redskins and Jets from Landover, Maryland, home of the Redskins at FedEx Field. Sellout crowd. And they are seeing a six-point lead right now from the home team. Of course, this is the opener of the NFL 2003 season here on ESPN. And we'll get a look at some of the other games going on that will get underway on Sunday. New England and Buffalo should be a great one. Lawyer Malloy cut by New England for salary cap reasons. Picked up by Buffalo. Should be a great game. Denver's at Cincinnati. The Colts will play at the Browns. San Diego will take on Kansas City. Priest Holmes, he and his big new contract. Houston is at Miami. St. Louis at New York. Arizona's at Detroit. Minnesota and Green Bay in an NFC North battle. Jacksonville goes to Carolina. Chicago's at San Francisco. New Orleans will be at Seattle. Atlanta, Dallas, Oakland at Tennessee. Tampa Bay at Philadelphia. And of course, we will have our normal big slate of games on the NFL on ESPN, beginning with that Oakland at Tennessee game on Sunday Night Football here on ESPN. It'll be a rematch of last year's AFC Championship game. Steve McNair and the Tennessee Titans will be looking for retribution against Rich Gannon and the Oakland Raiders. We'll have it for you live here on ESPN on Sunday Night Football. Titans pretty much got the same team back. They're hoping to be a little more healthy in terms of Eddie George and Steve McNair. And, of course, the Raiders fueled by falling one step short. Losing in that Super Bowl to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And speaking of the Buccaneers, they will be featured in our Monday Night Telecast. Live, as always, the Buccaneers and Warren Sapp will bring that crushing defense to Philadelphia to take on the Eagles. This, a rematch of last year's NFC Championship game. The Eagles felt that they should have been Super Bowl bound, but it was the Bucs who took care of them and went on to win the Super Bowl. Getting ready for the start of the third quarter outside of D.C. Lisa Guerrero, the Jets took the early lead. Seven to three, and then McCants on a four-yard pass from Ramsey put Washington back out in front. Hall added a second field goal, and Hall will kick off to the Jets as we start the third quarter. Lamont Jordan and Albert Johnson are back to receive, and it's Albert Johnson coming up past the 20, running into his own blocker, and taken down at the 23-yard line. Take a look at the numbers through the first half, and what a half it was for one Patrick Ramsey of the Redskins, 144 yards through the air, 12 of 13. He actually had 156 and lost 12 yards on sacks. And he made a couple of great passes, too. You know, avoiding a rush. Remember the one Mo Lewis comes in as a free rusher? He ducks underneath him and throws that ball to Lavernius Coles. And that was a great play. Now the Jets with Testa Verde begin from their own 23-yard line on first down. Curtis Martin. And Martin with a burst. And he first down picks up 12 before he's tackled by... Arrington. So Martin was nine carries for 31 yards in the first half, and now 10 for 43 on a 12 yard pickup. Yeah, let's look at Vinny Testaverde's passing chart and see what he did in the first half. And you'll see that under five yards, he was one for one in the middle, didn't throw any to the left, one for two in the right. Then over five, between five and 15, two for five in the middle, two for three to the right. 0 for 1 deep in the middle. He didn't throw one pass to the left, either medium, short, or deep. Here he gives the ball to Jordan up to the 38-yard line. Is that something, that's something we know because we're tracking it. Do you think that's something that Spurrier knows at this point? I would think the defensive coordinator should know that because they should be tracking the same thing. And then and if you're going to rotate or you're going to do anything with your, your defense, I would do it to the left of the field because... Vinny, you know, we talked about is a little rusty. His timing is a little off, and he's reverting back to just throwing right-handed. George right Edwards sided. is the defensive coordinator. Marvin Lewis was last year. Marvin, now the head coach at Cincinnati. A little flip out to Santana Moss, and Moss is tripped up at the 40-yard line by Jesse Armstead, the third and short. And I think Paul Hackett has done a good job for Vinny Testaverde of giving him good mystery. You see him here. He makes a pass to prevent here a little movement you know they think he's not going to move he rolls a little here he throws a dart in there here it looked like he was going to run that one so dropped it there's no way you drop that back 
that's still his favorite receiver, though. Wayne Corbett has caught two balls tonight for 26 yards. Vinny is 7 of 13, only 67 yards through the air. Redskins showing blitz. Will they come? They back off on third and five, and the ball is underthrown. Curtis Conway had it knocked away by Fred Smoot, and the crowd saluting Smoot. So Vinny again on a third down play, as he did at the end of the first half, coming up short on a pass where he needs X number of yards, and he comes up one or two yards shot yeah. to begin with. And I think it's just that that little rust. I mean, where, where he's not really off, where they're going to get an interception. It's not really a terrible pass, but it's just off enough that it's not a completed pass. Straczynski to punt. High floating kick. Fair catch called for made by the ex-Jet Chad Morton at the 27-yard line. So Ramsey and company going back to work for the first time in the second half with the Redskins up by six on opening night. The truest test of strength, stamina, and character. ESPN presents the International Ironman Triathlon. Top athletes in endurance sports compete around the globe on the most demanding courses ever. The Ironman Triathlon World Championship on ESPN. ESPN's Friday Night Fights. The NABF middleweight title is on the line when Canadian Kinsley Ikeke goes for his 18th victory against Kenny Ellis. Championship boxing tonight on ESPN. ESPN brings you the Kroger Senior Classic. Last year, Bob Gilder got his second consecutive win when he defeated Tom Jenkins in the playoff. The Kroger Senior Classic. First round, Saturday on ESPN. There's not enough time to play football. The press always want to hear everything. We always have to practice. Nobody said it was easy. That's why we'll always give our best to be the best. We want to reach the pinnacle of football. We want the Champions League. The UEFA Champions League starts September 17, only on ESPN. This telecast is copyrighted by the NFL for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this telecast or of any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of the game without the NFL's consent is prohibited. The Washington Redskins on top 13-7 to early in the third quarter. Patrick Ramsey, good first half. 12 of 13 for 156 yards. That's almost a perfect first half. Yeah, and they, they had a decent running game. 59 yards on the ground in the opening half. And now Trump Candidate takes the ball up to the 30. They picked up Candidate, and we talked about him briefly before. Johnny was the number one pick of St. Louis. That surprised a lot of people with a flag down here because he was picked in the first round behind Marshall Falk. And then the problem with Candidate with illegal procedure here against false start against Washington is that he was injury prone and fumble prone in St. Louis, made him expendable. Washington got him in a trade. He had a real good preseason, and they expect a lot of good things from him. Yeah, and sometimes, remember, Amon Green had that thing, too, in Seattle, and he ended up having a heck of a Illegal formation at Green Bay. on the offense. The original formation was illegal. Number 76 was on the end of the line. Five-yard penalty, still first down. John Jansen. Yeah, but that's not his fault. I mean, what that means is is the guy that was supposed to be in the end of the line outside of John Jansen wasn't there. See, here's John Jansen, and what they're saying is this guy here was was not was not up on the line. I don't know. He looks like he's up on the line there. Maybe it was before that, but the tackle can't be the end man on the line of scrimmage. But he always takes it in the neck. He's the only guy that gets recognized. Yeah, he and it's always the official. Yeah, either that or, either that or when, he, when he has a penalty, when he holds. First and 15. Ramsey moving out to his right and then taking the ball up to the 26-yard line for a short game. Let's take a look at Ramsey through the air tonight. Yeah, we looked at Vinny Testaverde's chart, and we see what Ramsey did with it. Again, to the right, two for two, under five yards. To the right, two for two in the middle, one for one. So they did spread it out, right, middle, left. Here is three for three in the middle right here between five and 15. So when 
he went you know deeper he went to the middle and then you see one for two deep here so when he wanted to go deep he went to the right when he wanted to go that mid-range was middle pass and here he sets up a screen over the middle and it's taken in by Chad Morton on a second and 12 play that gets them up to close to the 32 yard line will be third and about six tackled by Jason Glenn you know and I think that the the, the Redskins probably brought in trunk candidate for the same reason the Rams did they were just impressed with his speed because he has great speed and the way football is today you want a a tailback that you can put in the slot you can put him out as a receiver and do those kinds of things and he has to have receiver type speed to do that Mickens the nickel back when limping off the field Jamie Henderson in, in the secondary now on third down and seven Ramsey has it intercepted by Donnie Abraham the 36th of his career and the former Tampa Bay Buck with a huge play here and the Jets have the ball in Redskin territory I tell you he's Donnie Abraham is playing the quarterback and he does that he did that well at Tampa and he does it well here you just watch him back here he's here he's going to play back look he can see the receiver he can see the quarterback and he gets a better jump on it than the receiver did over here in the left side they bring their strong safety Sam Garns you see him go down there in the left that was a safety blitz and he thought that he had man coverage over there. Donnie Abraham was just cueing the quarterback all the way. And I think one thing Ramsey thought of there with, we mentioned Mickens coming out, there was Henderson in the shot as well. He's right there on that same side with Abraham. So Abraham with the opportune pick ball at the 26-yard line. Testa Verde, he'll set up the screen. One-hand grab and tackled to the 30 is Curtis Martin. And that's a loss of three on the play. And let's check in with Lisa. Thanks very much, who told me that he overall felt that Vinny Testaverde played very well in the first half, he seemed to really settle down by the end of the half. When I asked him about Lavernius Coles, his former player, he said, we have got to cover him better. When we've got a chance to sack the quarterback, we've got to do it. And finally, I've got an injury update for you. Free safety, John McGraw of the Jets. Well, we'll pick up that in a second. Second down and 14. As... Coles has been the big man tonight, and Curtis Martin on a second and long gets taken down at or just behind the line of scrimmage. You know, it was interesting that uh, Herm Edwards was saying one of the things they have to do is cover Lavernius Coles better. Remember, remember that that big one that Lavernius Coles made that was on Donnie Abraham. So Donnie Abraham was beaten deep by Lavernius Coles, then Donnie Abraham but just comes back as this. Half starts and he makes that big interception for the Jets. Herman knows all about Donnie Abraham, coached him in Tampa, brought him to New York. Third down and 15 at the 31 yard line. Testaverde to the left this time and he's going to pick up the first down as Conway had to come back. Makes the catch 14 yards downfield, and then Arrington begins to shove him, and a little shove back, and Smoot tries to get Arrington out of the play. Well, Smoot should have been closer to the play. Did you see how far off he was? I mean, how can it be third and that long, and your corner plays that deep? And Conway may have gotten away with one here, too, John, because you're not supposed to do what he did, spin the ball in front of the defender. Yeah, but watch what Smoot did. You see, he's up there playing tight coverage, and then he runs off, and he runs right beyond where the first down mark is. First and 10 at the 14-yard line. And that's thrown at the feet and caught by Beck. We talked about spinning the ball because we met with the officials, as we always do before the season, and they said, we're really going to crack down on taunting, and we consider that taunting. And that is and was taunting. And you saw what happened, you know, and there was a little flare-up after that play. But I still can't believe how poorly Fred Smoot played that. I mean, that, that if you're up that tight, then get a bump. If you're going to bail out, at least know where the first down mark is. Came on a third and 15. Second and nine now from the 13-yard line. 7.50 to go in the third. 
fake draw, go to the left side, and nobody's home. So miscommunication that time with Curtis Conway. Good-looking play at the outset, faking the draw, spinning to the left, but nobody home. Yeah, we were talking about how early in the first half, Vinny didn't throw any passes to the left. Everything was to the right and to the middle, and then he comes back and gets a big one to Conway to the left, and then right there, they just weren't on the same page. Third and nine. I'll say one thing for Vinny Testaverde. He does have a certain calmness about him, doesn't he? Nope. Maybe, maybe that's 17 years in this league. Tranquility base. We copy. Third down and nine. Looks right, looks left. Now over the middle. Guns it knocked away at the last moment by Matt Bowen, the former Packer. He tried to get it to Wayne Corbett. Couldn't make contact with him, and they'll have to settle for a field goal attempt. Yeah, what pass protection, though, Vinny has on this play. But the Redskins have no pass rush. Watch what he's able to do. Look right, look left, and come back to his third read to Wayne Corbett in the middle. And that'll set up a 31-yard field goal attempt for the well-traveled Doug Bryan. Last with the Vikings last year. Released. Now a jet. Officially 30 yards, and that one is inside the left upright. So the Jets pick up three to close within three. As you look at the capital, 735 remaining in the third period on opening night in Washington. Your compliments keep coming in. Whoever came up with that format, I absolutely applaud them for watching outstanding football. Your passion for the game makes the show a success. There's no question about it. Africa deserves to have the World Cup. I love your fair and down-to-earth comments. I think goals should be the way you decide matches over a season. You guys rock. For Tommy and Eddie, I'm JP. We'll see you next week on Press Pass. Fridays on ESPN. ESPN goes spanning the globe this September to bring you the world of sports. The UEFA Champions League returns for another thrilling season where the finest clubs battle for the top prize of European football. The IRL IndyCar Series continues with the world's best drivers pushing the fastest open-wheel cars to the limit. The Major League Baseball regular season winds down with the teams fighting for a position in the playoffs. Generation X athletes compete in Asian X Games 5. The legends of golf hit the links in the Champions Tour all month long. The top clubs of Holland hit the pitch for Dutch football. Great action this September on ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Coming up immediately following the game, keep it here on ESPN for Sports Center. All the top stories, scores, and highlights from around the world of sports, right here on ESPN Sports Center. Jets to kick off. We lost Lisa's mic at the end of our last report just to finish it up. John McGraw, the safety, who was dinged earlier, a concussion, he will not return. I think anytime anyone has any kind of concussion in this game, they should not return. I mean, it shouldn't be he's a little dinged, he had a little concussion, a minor concussion, he'll be back. If you have a concussion, that's a bruise to the brain, and you shouldn't play anymore in that game. That's become standard operating procedure in the NFL as Morton feels the kick at the 11. And one of the four Jets who came to the nation's capital is taken out of bounds by Jacoby Shepard at the 30-yard line. 7.27 remaining in the third period. Good one in the opener in D.C. 13-10, Washington.
the truest test of strength, stamina, and character. ESPN presents the International Ironman Triathlon. Top athletes in endurance sports compete around the globe on the most demanding courses ever. The Ironman Triathlon World Championship on ESPN. We're in the third quarter of the NFL opener here on ESPN. The Redskins and the Jets locked up in a tight battle as expected. 13 to 10, the Redskins lead it at home. Now we'll get you back to Al Michaels and John Madden. Of Patrick throws for over 100 yards. Now the Skins from the 29-yard line, up by three. Ramsey has that one batted at the line and almost picked off by Abraham. Batted away by Chester McLaughlin. Oh, yeah, the old Raider and Chief Chester McLaughlin. Yeah, old Chester can still get a push up the middle, and that's that's what they didn't have earlier on Patrick Ramsey and 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 they know that they have to get that because he's had too much time in the pocket now watch Big Chester here all you have to do is get here and get a push to this point and then get your hands up see right there you just push that guard take the guard and center of the gap and get your arm up that guard was Randy Thomas who played with the Jets last year pushed him back into Ramsey second down and 10 from the 28 yard line and they give the ball off to Chad Morton and he goes nowhere and there's Chester again we talked about a former chief former Raider he made almost the entire AFC West he also played with the Broncos he's only missing the Chargers I know and on those last two plays he's playing like Joe Green <laughs> he's, I mean, he takes that fast rush he has a double team that time he just takes on the blocker holds the hole and makes the tackle that's the way a defensive tackle is supposed to play. Now they give them a break because they're getting third and long and they can put their pass rushes in. Now they have three defensive linemen. They call this Mohawk. They put Dwayne Robertson, their number one pick in the game. He's number 63. And here's who they like to rush. Ramsey steps up and the throw is low. They needed 11 underthrown and underthrown to begin with because they wouldn't have picked up the first down intended for Liddell Betts. Yeah, and that defense, the Jets go three defensive linemen and then they keep Mo Lewis in, and Mo Lewis becomes a pass rusher. That's why it's called Mohawk, and you saw him come with the pressure from that right side. Brian Barker, who suffered a severe injury last year as a holder, had to undergo plastic surgery on his nose and face, but wins the punting job this year in Santana Moss, running parallel. Started at the 33 and takes the ball into Redskin territory. Broke a would be tackle by Ithiani Ohalete to set him up in good position with 620 left in the third. And in 
any moment, your brain will tell you it's time to take a nap. Top rate boxing every week on ESPN. They've been called a dream team, a gas to watch. If you're telling me I look like Will Bond, I just got a really bad opinion of myself. This is the best show on television. Pardon the interruption. Of sports and other stuff on ESPN. Speed thrills on ESPN. The IRL IndyCar Series continues. The next stop, Chicagoland Speedway, where defending champion Sam Hornish Jr. will try to take the checkers at the Chicago Indy 300. Monday, live on ESPN. Well, this is Monday Night Football on Thursday, but when we go back to Monday, this coming Monday, Tampa Bay and Philadelphia, Bucks Eagles, that wraps up week one. Now the Jets, starting from the 42-yard line, give the ball to Curtis Martin, and let's go back to the replay of the run back. Yeah, and that's life on special teams, and this is what it's like to be what they call a gunner. Watch Rashad Bauman here. He's going to get hit right here by Sam Garns. Watch it, right there. <laughs> And he goes back, his helmet goes off, but there's no quit. You can't quit playing. You can miss a tackle, but when your hat goes off and you're on special teams and you're the gunner, you got to keep playing. Tough kid, second down yeah, and 10 tough. from the 41-yard line. If That's you play this game without a hat, you're tough. Oh, baby. Swing out to Martin. He gets taken down by Arrington out on the flat. You know, that's the kind of play, John, the way he ran it back, you almost always see a penalty. The Jets weren't penalized on that play. In fact, the Jets tonight do not have a single penalty. Yeah, and I've been impressed with the with the quality of play in this game. Let's watch LeVar Arrington. We're talking about his coverage and how he starts out. And then this is the other thing that he is. When you're going to be a cover linebacker, you have to be a very good open field tackler. And that's what he is. Jets have had the fewest penalties in the league collectively over the last three years. And nothing new there. Very disciplined tonight. Third down and 13. As Testaverde guns it over the middle. It's caught by Corbett. But there are three Redskins right there to greet him, including Jeremiah Trotter, the first man, to slow him down. They're out of field goal range, and in comes the punting unit. Yeah, they would have needed about another five or six. Of course, they got another five or six yards. They could also have had a first down, but another five or six yards would have put him in possible field goal range. And another time, John, where Vinny needs X number of yards and comes up short on the throw. Yeah, and I think that, that that was the, you know, the second down play. I mean, I think that was the thing. You can't put Vinny in a lot of third and longs. Szczynski's kick is fair caught at the 14-yard line by Chad Morton. Redskins begin their next drive from next spot. With 419 left in the third, Washington 13 in the Jets 10. baseball on ESPN. The New York Mets are trying to become an obstacle for the Phillies as they look to clinch a postseason bid. The Mets and the Phillies, Monday on ESPN. There's a place where great ones face off. A place where strength is measured. A place to be considered the best. A place the UEFA Champions League. The search for the best of the best. Starts September 17, only on ESPN. It's still a close one. Third quarter, about four minutes to play in that third with the Redskins still clinging to the 13-10 lead. 
over the Jets. The Jets losing four starters this offseason to the Redskins, but so far, Washington getting the better of New York. Let's get back to the action. Our nation's capital on this humid Thursday night, and on first down from the 14, it's Liddell Betts picking up seven. And let's check in again with Lisa. Hey, Al, I got to spend some time the last couple of days talking to Patrick Ramsey, who struck me as being very mature and articulate, but apparently I'm not the only one that thinks so. Jet turned redskin Chad Morton told me that Chad Pennington and Patrick Ramsey were separated at birth. He says they're practically the same guy. Both are intelligent, eager to learn. They have the same leadership qualities. And guys, I guess redskin fans can only hope to be so lucky. Yeah, I think that's a very good comparison, second down and four. As the Dell Betts picked up the first down, and, and they do have similarities, and, and both are, are very into everything involved. And look at Pennington. Here's a guy who won't be able to play for two months, into everything, keeps copious notes, as does Ramsey. And I bet they're talking about that play. Remember that one where it was thrown out there to the left, and Conway wasn't where he's supposed to be, or Vinny threw to someplace that Conway wasn't. But it was interesting, though. Bernius Cole said the thing that he hated most about leaving the Jets was leaving Chad Pennington. Jason Ferguson. The old one that drives me nuts. Snap. Encroachment, 72, defense. Five yard penalty. Now, from day one, you talk, watch the ball. Don't move until the ball moves. There's Lavernius Coles out there talking to Chad Pennington, and I know, I mean, they have so much respect for each other. I mean, Pennington, you know, when he started, Lavernius Coles became his guy, and then Lavernius Coles thinks that, that this is a guy that he would have liked to have played his whole career with. After the first penalty tonight against the Jets, it's first down and five. And reaching for it and making the grab, but not getting the first down is the tight end Robert Royal. I tell you, Lavernius Coles and Patrick Ramsey have, have been on the same page. And again, he has to get to a spot, and Ramsey's going to throw it to that spot. Watch the moves that he makes here, and watch how the ball gets there perfectly. Now, here's that move that he made on Donnie Abraham that stop and go or out and up. And that was a heck of a throw by Patrick Ramsey because you remember what he had to do to get in position to throw that ball. Second and one. Coles has not caught a ball here in the second half. Betts had to move the chains. And also moved the molars of Tyrone Carter. Lavernius Coles, here's what he had to tell us. Not I want to come out and just, just show the world, you know, that the Jets made a mistake by letting me go. And I think that's what we all uh, want to prove, uh, us four guys that left. I mean, they let us get away, and now hopefully we can make them pay for it. They let them get away. Some people thought, you know, that the Redskins had targeted the Jets. That wasn't the case. If you're going to target somebody, you target somebody in your own division. Certainly not in the other conference. This is Gardner. They needed a, a wide receiver. They needed an offensive lineman, and they needed a kicker, and they needed... A special teams guy and the Jets just happened to have all four of them yeah they had good players and they had those four that were available that you could go out and get in free agency remember the Chad Morton thing though and that had to go to arbitration because uh, the Redskins gave him an offer the Jets thought they matched it right and it went to an arbitrator and in fact they didn't match it and the arbitrator as you recall was a Washington Redskins season ticket holder <laughs> How about a stack deck Second and six from the 46 yard line. Ramsey over the middle, and that's another first down as Rod Gardner makes the catch. Third year guy out of Clemson and number one pick in 01. Let's check it again with Lisa. The former soap opera vixen. I know good drama when I hear it. Check this out. A couple of years ago, Herman Edwards told Lavernius Coles that as long as he was the head coach, Coles would be a Jet. Well, fast forward to 2003. Um, Lavernius is a Redskin, and he is bitter. Now, Coach Edwards told us that, yes, he indeed did say that, but he's not the owner. He's not the GM. He doesn't sign the checks. Meanwhile, Lavernius is still feeling betrayed, which may be why he told me the other day this was the biggest game of his life. And he Played like a certainly in the first half. Lisa Guerrero, soap opera vixen. Hmm. This is 
Liddell Betts taking it to the 40-yard line. What's a vixen? <laughs> I think that's something it's you good. do when you put like eight guys up and you and you vix them some and you drop some. Yeah, it's, it's sort of like that. Yeah, that's what Sam Garns was doing. He was vixen. <laughs> that's the end of the quarter. And on that Vixen. note, we'll vixen our way right out of here. Fourth quarter upcoming, 13-10, Washington. Back after this message from our ABC station. thrill of the race? ESPN has all the speed you desire, and we serve it up fast. Speed thrills on ESPN. In the ring, it's one-on-one -on -one action. Your hands are your only weapon. Your body, your opponent's target. And in any moment, your brain will tell you it's time to take a nap. Top rate boxing every week on ESP. IndyCar Series continues. The next stop, Chicagoland Speedway, where defending champion Sam Hornish Jr. will try to take the checkers at the Chicago Indy 300. Monday, live on ESPN. Reminded that Sports Center on ESPN follows the game as we come back to our nation's capital. Al Michaels, John Madden, and the soap opera vixen, Lisa Guerrero. It's, it, it's sassy and brassy and sort of villainous. Of well, then it is like a blitzer. It's right. <laughs> Donner and blitzer and vixen. Vixen. And, yeah. <laughs> Little reindeers, I think. We begin the fourth quarter with a second and six for the Washington Redskins at the 41-yard line. One of the few times tonight, in fact, the first time I can remember, Ramsey checking off at the line, and he gives it to Betts, who swings to the outside. That was a bad check off. When you check off and there were four green shirts around you, you should have run the original play. Yeah, did you see the left guard, Dave Fiore? Whatever the check off was, he didn't get it because he checked to a run. The left guard, they were running to the left, and Dave Fiore starts to pass protect. Watch him, the left guard here. They're going to run this way, and he starts back. Now, that's a bad thing. When, when he starts back, see, he's pass protection, and, of course, because he's pass protecting, that allowed penetration. He fought pass, a Ramsey call run. And you can see him almost calling himself a knucklehead, not either. You know, you wonder, John, as timeout is taken here, if, if you don't check off during the game, and it's three-quarters of the way into the game, maybe you're not even thinking about it. Well, the, the thing that the Redskins do is they run some check with me. I mean, they'll run, they'll, they'll call a play, and they're either going to run it to the right or run it to the left, and they do it just to stay out of bad plays. And, and I thought that's what it was, but that couldn't have been that because it had to be a pass where they check from a pass to a run. And that's always the toughest one, when you check pass to run or run to pass. Fiorio was the guy, and he's one of the guys we haven't talked about. They got Randy Thomas, so they sort of reconstructed the interior of that line. The other thing about the Redskins I find so fascinating, John, is that Steve Spurrier last year had at one time or another six of his Florida Gators playing. It's almost like old home week. Tonight he has no Florida Gators who are active. He only has one Taylor Jacobs on the roster, and he's inactive tonight. So here is Steve Spurrier, no Gators, two guys from Duke. But he has better players than he yes. had last year. And Steve used to coach it Duke years ago. Third down and eight. And that pass is incomplete. 
thrown out of bounds intended for Rod Gardner. Now the Florida Gators have 40 guys in the NFL and there they were last year Matthews and Werfel who was just cut. We'll get to that in a second. Doring Green Jackson and Gillespie and then Taylor Jacobs he was their top draft choice this year so he figures to be back next week at an abdominal injury but Florida with 40 guys in the NFL only one Gator here and he's an active tonight two Blue Devils yeah but like I say he has better players than he had a year ago and that's what you know all these new coaches it takes them a couple years to get their type of guys whether it's Steve Spurrier Bill Parcells you know, Steve Mariucci I mean it's going to take them a while to get their players that they want for their systems Santana Moss fair catches that Vinny is coming back 14 11 remaining in the fourth quarter Washington 13 and the Jets 10. ESPN delivers two of Europe's greatest imports from Holland the speed and fury of Dutch football and the rough and tumble Scottish Premier League Giants of the game PSV Eindhoven Ajax Amsterdam Feyenoord Rotterdam as well as old firm rivals Celtic and Rangers experience total football on the channel that gives you the footballing world ESPN NFL return to ESPN for another season of American football. The silver and black attack of the Oakland Raiders invade Tennessee to tackle the Titans. In a return match of last year's conference finals, Steve McNair leads his team against the aging superstars of Oakland. The intensity of this AFC rivalry grows with each encounter. Let the games begin. Raiders Titans, live Monday, the NFL on ESPN. ESPN Sunday night edition coming your way this weekend a week one matchup between the Tennessee Titans and the Oakland Raiders which also happens to be a rematch of the AFC championship game Titans and Raiders at Oakland on Sunday Field opening night of the 2003 National Football League season the Jets have the ball at their own 16 Washington up 13 to 10 and they begin this drive with Lamont Jordan chugging his way across the 15 yard line for a game of two how have the Jets key guys done so far tonight well Vinny with 12 out of 21 but he's at only averaging four yards per pass very low Martin fairly silent tonight 12 carries 42 yards Corbett you know you look at those numbers amongst your stars and you think you know what you could be out of the ball game but they're very much in it and they're very much in it and I think one of those things no turnovers no interception by Vinny I think that's that's a big stat for him and only one penalty second and ten and Vinny gets taken down the first guy to get in there was Ronaldo win and then Bruce Smith helped to finish him off now Smith is three sacks away from being the all time leader he'll surpass Reggie White and we'll see if they give him a half a sack here. You know what Bruce Smith has always done? He's always gotten off the ball quickly. Watch him and his burst when the ball snapped. In fact, it darn near looks like he's offside. Ronaldo Wynn comes from the other side. And I think you have to give him the sack. He's the first guy there. He's unblocked. We'll get the official accounting in just a second. It's third down and 14. I think this is going to be challenged. I mean, they, they have to say that he fumbled that. If. That's what Steve Spurrier has to be saying. I'm not sure the Redskins can get the ball in this situation. And I think that's what Walt Coleman is saying 
to Steve Spurrier. When, yeah, if he's right. ruled down, you can challenge, you can throw the flag, but then the official will go over and say, you know what, you can't win this. Yeah, that's 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 what it is. So I'm sure Walt Coleman is telling Steve Spurrier that that you can't do it. The play is not reviewable. Yeah. And that's the way it should be because you yeah. shouldn't. If the coach throws a flag under those circumstances, you shouldn't penalize him. No, you should. And, and and the other thing is the is the play call is right too because when you say a guy is down, you blow the whistle. The play is over. Anything that happens after you say the ball is dead doesn't or can't count. Right. Once the whistle blows, that's it. Meanwhile, Smith did get a half sack there, so he's two and a half away from Reggie Weiss' all-time record. Yeah, he made a good move on that. He got a heck of a jump coming off the ball, but Ronaldo wins from the other side. It wasn't even blocked. Now it's third down and 14. Oh, baby. And it's Arrington trying to get the jump. Hey, he was trying to get that same jump that Bruce Smith got. Look at Vinny last night and asked him if they had a, a, a silent count for this game because of the crowd noise. He said no. Neutral zone fraction number 56 of the defense was in the neutral zone when the offense fall started. Five yard penalty, still third down. That'll make it third down and nine. Speaking of Bruce Smith, who plays in situationals, obviously in situations where he's going to pass rush. There it is, right up to the minute. Kevin Green retired. Chris Dolan retired. Richard Dent long retired. So Smith is going to hold that mark for a long time if he can get it. Of course, Deacon Jones thinks he had 460, but that's another story. Third down and nine from the 17-yard line. And Testaverde throws, and again on a third down play where he needs X number of yards, he completes the pass in this particular case, but he comes up short of the first down on a pass to Corbett. Yeah, and I think Vinny's just trying to play it safe here. I mean, you know, we, we have a very close game. It's going to come down to fourth quarter. Someone making or not making a play. He doesn't want to make a mistake, but they can't get in those third and long situations. I mean, and to stay away from those, you have to have more success on first down and second down. And you can see where Vinny said, ah, man, it's the fourth time tonight he's come up short on a third down pass. Here's Straczynski's putt. Taken at the 36-yard line. Chad Morton swinging to the outside. Soul slows him down, and he's taken down at the 45-yard line. 11.40 remaining now in the fourth quarter on opening night with the Redskins leading the Jets 13-10. ESPN goes spanning the globe this September to bring you the world of sports. The UEFA Champions League returns for another thrilling season where the finest clubs battle for the top prize of European football. The IRL IndyCar Series continues with the world's best drivers pushing the fastest open-wheel cars to the limit. The Major League Baseball regular season winds down with the teams fighting for a position in the playoffs. Generation X athletes compete in Asian X Games 5. The legends of golf hit the links in the Champions Tour all month long. The top clubs of Holland hit the pitch for Dutch football. Great action this September on ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. The truest test of strength, stamina, and character. ESPN presents the International Ironman Triathlon. Top athletes in endurance sports compete around the globe on the most demanding courses ever. The Ironman Triathlon World Championship on ESPN. In our very first Monday Night Football on ESPN telecast, a rematch of the NFC Championship game, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Philadelphia Eagles. Monday Night Football on ESPN. 
Giants. I think, I think the skids ought to get back to Lavernius Coles. Five in the first half, none in the second half. No catches. That's the word tonight from Groucho Marx. Liddell Betts picks up about three to the 49 yard line. Try to get you a shot of Joe Namath before. And there, there is Joe in the, in the glasses and the blue shirt. Yep. And Sonny Jurgensen. Saw him yesterday about 10.30 in the morning. Finishing up cigar number two. I'll tell you, two great quarterbacks, too. I mean, two guys that, you know, you talk about, uh, Steve Spurrier was talking about guys that could flick it and throw it and do anything with it. Sonny Jurgensen and Joe Namath were both those mm -hmm. kinds of guys. Second and seven. Look out from behind. Ramsey has it extracted by Abraham, and the ball is loose. And for the moment, it's going to be ruled a fumble at the 43-yard line and recovered. Jason Ferguson of the Jets comes up with the ball. And John Abraham goes right around Chris Samuels. And you're going to see him. I mean, he gets a good jump. He gets on the outside. And then he comes from that backside and just strips the ball out. Watch his play. Here he is. Now watch the jump that he gets. Once you get even with him, you're beyond him. And then when you go for the tackle, you go for the tackle, and you Tommy Hawk that thing right out of there. Watch him go for the ball, the strip, the whole thing right on one play. Right now, do we have the empty hand? Do we have a challenge? We do not because Ramsey was, did not have the hand coming forward. It's a sack. It's a fumble. It's a turnover, and the ball is at the 43-yard line. First and 10 for the Jets. Testaverde swings it out. It's Soul seeking the first down. Appears to get it. Ten-yard pickup. Yeah, you and know, you know, you look at a game and you say, how are you going to win it? You know, you always think the quarterback, the receivers, the running back. It can be a big play by a defensive end like Abraham just laid right, right there. And that could be the momentum changer of this entire game. And he did it. You know, at a, at a point, you get in the fourth quarter, 13-10. Now we're getting to the point where we're going to win or lose and someone has to make big plays. John Abraham made the first one. Ball at the 31-yard line. Martin to the 29. You know, you see a play like that and that was clearly a fumble even though he was about ready to get that arm to come forward. And naturally, what do you think about it? You think about the New England-Oakland game in the playoffs a couple of years ago. The referee that night? Walt Coleman. The referee tonight? Walt Coleman. And in here, you can't say that the hand was going forward because you can see that ball coming out before the hand even starts forward. Right. You know, but Walt Coleman, if you remember that, he called that play a fumble originally. Exactly. They eventually got it right. That's what the rule said. Second down and eight at the 29-yard line. Martin taking it to the 25, Armstead is stopped there it's third down and four so right now the Jets in field goal range it would be a 42 or 43 yard attempt to tie the game if they don't gain a yard here on third down and this is a lot better situation here for Benny Testaverde because now we have a third and five before he was getting those third and ten thirds and plus this is the type of first down that he can convert with a pass he sends soul in motion Swings it out to Moss, and Moss can't get the first down. So again, on the third down, they complete a pass. It's a little swing out here, and then Moss, instead of going forward, goes sideways, and they wind up losing a yard. Yeah, and that wasn't Vinny on that one. That was a play call. If you're not, I mean, you only have four or five yards. You may as well get your guys up that four or five yards to get the first down. You throw the screen as you say maybe Moss could have turned up maybe right here when he went parallel right there Maybe he could have cut it up and got a first down But I think it's more the play call than Santana Moss now with John Hall in Washington It's the much traveled Doug Bryan a 41 yard attempt 49ers Saints Colts Bucks Vikings and now a jet and Doug Bryan on his first clutch attempt as a New York jet bangs it through with 813 Remaining in the fourth quarter as Brian has just tied it up. They cash in on the sack and the fumble for three. 13 all. It's been off. Made a deep right 
Center Edmonds is back near the wall. He leaps. Did he get it? He got it. That's what a play. That's how you show it. Oh, what a play. Unbelievable play by Edmonds. New York. Bruce dribbles one. Barehanded by Wiggins. And tough play got it. By a step. Miguel Ojeda takes a big swing. There's a drive well struck to left. Berkman at the scoreboard, feeling for room. And he makes another catch against the scoreboard. Fourth pitcher used in the game. That one towards second. Oh, oh what a stop on Leon. Yes! Wow. Your compliments keep coming in. Whoever came up with that format, I absolutely applaud them for watching outstanding football. Your passion for the game makes the show a success. There's no question about it. Africa deserves to have the World Cup. I love your fair and down-to-earth comments. I think goals should be the way you decide match over a season. You guys rock. For Tommy and Eddie, I'm JP. We'll see you next week on Press Pass. Fridays on ESPN. With just three races to go, the IRL IndyCar Series Championship is as tight as it can be. Don't miss the Delphi Indy 300 from Chicagoland Speedway on ESPN. The Jets to kick off. Morton and Liddell Betts are back to receive for the Redskins. The 13 remaining in regulation. Fielded at the six yard line by Chad Morton. A pass to 30 goes Chad and he takes it out to the 33 yard line. Swain makes the tackle and Steve Spurrier, the old ball coach, sending in the first play. Yeah, and I don't think Patrick Ramsey has been the same since that interception. Remember that one that John Abraham picked off on him? You know, he was, he was so cool early and, and he was really hitting the spots and everything. And Abraham picks this up. Then the next play, the ball is tipped. And then the next play, he throws this one. And then he gets you know, a sack and he loses the ball and, and whatever. Maybe it's confidence or whatever it is. But from, from that point on, after that sack, he hasn't, I mean, after that interception, he hasn't been the same guy. Three out of seven for 18 yards are the numbers. And now they give it to Kennedy, and Trung takes it up to the 41-yard line. So they go back to start this drive on the ground, and Kennedy picks up eight. You know, and part of it is Ted Cottrell, the defensive coordinator of the Jets, in their adjustments. They started using, especially on passing downs, they started using a lot more of that Mohawk, where they go the, the three defensive linemen, and they rush Mo Lewis, and, they, and they're playing more zone and those types of things that really Patrick Ramsey hasn't felt comfortable against. Skins had 203 yards in the first half and 52 in the second. So the adjustments well heated, but now candidate on the ground and two good runs by the former Ram and former Arizona Wildcat. Tackled by Carter, first down up at the 50-yard line. Yeah, and the other thing that you think that somewhere Steve Spurrier is going to have to get back to Lavernius Coles. That that's that's part of it. I mean, he started off, he had those five receptions, and then they kind of went away from him or maybe the, the Jets are doing a better job of covering but I think I think to get this offense going again I think they have to get Coles involved in it. Coles with those five catches all in the first half blanked here in the second half. They were pointing to Larry Moore I think no. they take a time out he started to come off the field and then he went down and then he got up again. Mm -hmm. So this is not a a charged Timeout. The officials see something like that and they'll stop the play to let him get off the field. Lenny Friedman, one of the, the Dukies we talked about, will come in to replace him, former Bronco. And he's been playing pretty well. Uh, uh, Larry Moore has been injured anyway, and Lenny Friedman in the preseason has been has been playing that center position. So this isn't something that he's, he's a guard and a center, but he's been playing quite a bit of center in preseason. Clock begins to roll again. Edwards is pacing. First and ten now for the Redskins at midfield. 
keep it on the ground. Kennedy, another good run to the 43, so he's ripping them off seven and eight yards at a time. A flag is down at the 46-yard line. And this one's going to come back. Yeah, I, I don't know if it's against Dave Fiore or not, but he's a left guard who pulled around. I thought he did a heck of a job. 74. He, yeah, it is. 10-yard penalty. Still first down. You know what he did? He comes out and he blocks him, and then he misses him, and then he goes to get him again, and he tackles him. Watch him. He's a left guard here. He's going to come out to this side, and you're going to see him come and lead, and then he misses right there. Then he gets up, and he goes after Marvin Jones, and you just see him tackle him. That's one way to get him. Plus him seven from the spot. First down and 17 now from the 43-yard line. Skins might have been moving. Yeah, it was Robert Royal. Prior to the snap, false start, 88, off, five-yard penalty, still first down. So after a promising beginning on this drive with Canada, two good runs and then a run call back by a penalty, all of a sudden it's first and 22, and Larry Moore has come back into the game. We talked about stupid things that should never happen, and the nose tackle is right over the ball. There should never be offside. A wide receiver or a split receiver also should never be offside. First down and 22 from the 38. Draw this time, and here's Kennedy. Steady dose of Trung, who was the number one pick of the Rams three years ago. And he's up to the 45-yard line. The Redskins have to get a first down here. You know, that's, that's the way you think. I mean, you know, you have a tie score, so the first thing you have to do is get a first down. And then you try and get in field goal range. Then once you get in field goal range, then you try for the touchdown. Could it come down to a whole field goal attempt tonight? Second down and 15 at the 45-yard line. 20 remaining in the... Monday Night Football on ESPN, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Philadelphia Eagles will... Play a rematch of their NFC Championship game here on ESPN. Something on that. You know, you wondered if a guy has a burst. And I'll tell you, you know, you want to burst by wide receivers and you want to burst by, by linebackers, but you also want to burst by defensive linemen. Now watch him come right there. That is what you call a burst by a defensive tackle. There, he looked like the number one draft choice. Number one pick and the fourth overall pick out of Kentucky. Third down and nine now. Ramsey out of the gun from the 49-yard line. The gun, a familiar formation from his days at Tulane. And he throws, and that one is incomplete. And that would have been short of the first down anyway because Howard was draped all over Darnarian McCants, who scored a touchdown earlier. Yeah, you do wonder about this, don't you? Why, you know, they, they, they keep throwing that, that ball short of the first down. That even if you complete it, you're not in field goal range, nor do you have a first down. You think that somewhere, you know, when you get third and eight, that you ought to have a nine or ten yard pass. I can see where you don't have 20 yard pass. Well, Jess have done it on at least five occasions tonight. Suzinski's punt hits the chalk uh, at about, rather, Barker's punt. At about the 20 yard line. The number one pick right there. Showing his burst with 429 remaining in the fourth. And the game tied 13 13. Speed. Do you crave the hair raising thrill of the race? has all the speed you desire and we serve it up fast speed thrills on espn
telling me I look like Will Bond. I just got a really bad opinion of myself. This is the best show on television. Pardon the interruption. Our sports and other stuff on ESPN. Heading into the final minutes of the fourth quarter, this one all knotted up at 13 apiece as the New York Jets and Washington Redskins do battle in our NFL 2003 opening game. Let's get back to it. 429 left in the fourth quarter. The game is tied. Bruce Smith is in the game, and Benny Testaverde begins this drive from his own 22-yard line. Moss in motion. They give it to Martin. Martin gives it to Moss. Coming back this way. Testaverde is out there to block. And then he gets ripped down by Matt Bowen after a gain of nine. Santana Moss who started in motion and came back the other way. I'll tell you, did, did Jason Fabini get a heck of a block on Bruce Smith? And that's what got him started. I mean, you have to get a soft corner somehow. Watch this block right there. He put him right in the middle of the line. Then that gives you some room out here. But it all started with Jason Fabini's block. He's been doing a pretty good job over there on Bruce Smith. Jason Fabini, sixth year from Cincinnati. Fourth pick in 98. Second down and one from the 31-yard line. And through the middle goes Martin, but he can't pick up the first down. Arrington all over the place. Good tackle. And that's the thing that he can do. And he has to because they had a whole play side. LeVar Arrington comes from the backside. Watch him. He's going to come off the corner here and make the play over here. You see him? You, you start up the field. Then you don't go where he lined up. You go where he's going to end up. And you just flatten out right down the line and make a deep cleaner. One of the reasons he goes to the Pro Bowl, he'll be going to a lot more. That Third was a great play by him. Third down and one now. From the 31 yard line. Play clock ticking all the way down, and Vinny's going to have to take a timeout. And that is their second. So the Jets are down to one plus the two minute warning as the clock goes down to 257. And I'm sure that uh, Paul Hackett has a better play in this third and short situation <laughs> than he did the last time. He, he threw that screen, and, you know, you know, and he didn't get the first down. I would think now that. This is the type of thing, if they if they can get the pass protection, that Vinny can make this kind of throw for a first down. You, you would think third and one, they're not going to throw a half-yard pass here, are they? No, they can't <laughs> throw it short. And I, you know, and, and you say, well, why don't they run? And, and even though it's a third and long one, to me, that is a passing situation in this situation. Absolutely. 2.57 remaining in the fourth quarter. 39-year-old Vinny Testaverde, Bruce Smith, on the verge of eclipsing Reggie White's all-time sack record. Imploring the crowd to get with it. This is all about pass rush and pass protection. Lamont Jordan is the tailback in this set. And they give it to him, and it's a, a play that is slow developing, is stopped by Trotter. What kind of a call was that? I have, I have no idea. I mean, I mean, this was, you, know, you say, when do you want to pass? You have to make a play. This is the ideal passing situation. And they burned the timeout to get to that point. Right. And, and, and the Redskins, you see, they just have everything plugged up. I mean, there's no place to run anyway. They get penetration. Again, it was a perfect pass situation. It was a terrible run situation. Straczynski to punt. Easy. Chad Morton, short kick, fair caught at the 38-yard line. So now the Redskins thinking about getting into field goal range, thinking about chewing up the clock. And remember, the Jets are down to just one timeout, and the clock will, of course, also stop at the two-minute warning. Now, the Skins, take a look at their first six opponents, how tough this is, but they do get a break. No Pennington tonight. Then the Falcons next week, and, of course, that means no Michael Vick. Then the Giants, Pats, Eagles, and Bucks. Look at that right there in games five and six. Then it finally gets a little softer, but they are the first team since the 89 Dolphins to have to open up a season facing six teams with winning records from the year before. And right now, they have to be thinking about getting a couple of first downs. 
from the 39-yard line. They give it to Betts. A little bit of a hole and a five-yard gain, and he takes it up to the 45. Now, on the other side of the timeout situation, Washington has all of its timeouts, and they'll take this down to the two-minute warning. So Washington with three, the Jets with one. Two minutes remaining on opening night of the 2003 NFL season. The Jets and the Redskins tied 13-13. The truest test of strength, stamina, and character. ESPN presents the International Ironman Triathlon. Top athletes in endurance sports compete around the globe on the most demanding courses ever. The Ironman Triathlon World Championship on ESPN. ESPN goes spanning the globe this September to bring you the world of sports. The UEFA Champions League returns for another thrilling season where the finest clubs battle for the top prize of European football. The IRL IndyCar Series continues with the world's best drivers pushing the fastest open-wheel cars to the limit. The Major League Baseball regular season winds down with the teams fighting for a position in the playoffs. Generation X athletes compete in Asian X Games 5. The legends of golf hit the links in the Champions Tour all month long. The top clubs of Holland hit the pitch for Dutch football. Great action this September on ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. game show will it end in two minutes or will we go to overtime is the question two minutes remaining last year on the first ever Thursday night opener remember the Giants and 49ers were 13 all and it came down to Jose Cortez kicking a field goal with six seconds left in the game to give the 49ers the win against the Giants second down and four Washington at the 45 yard line Ramsey stepping up Jets territory. Ramsey taking off and slides to a stop at the 30-yard line. 24 yards for Ramsey. Big play by Patrick Ramsey. You're going to see exactly what he says. The Jets are in a three-man line. They get the end up the middle, and they stop the nose tackle. So then he has that big lane to the left. And he just takes it, and he runs it for the first down. Already in field goal range. There's his wife, Virginia. Paul has hit the 50-yarder right now. If they gain nary a yard, it would be a 48-yard attempt, first and 10. And timeout is taken by the Jets. So they burned all of them. And Washington can try to move the ball in a little closer, take the clock all the way down, and set up a whole field goal attempt. This... Monday Night Football kickoff special on Thursday being brought to you by T-Mobile. Well, the Redskins are on the move here in the final minute and a half. Tie score at 13 apiece, driving for perhaps what they hope would be the winning score. Right now, the pressure on the Jets' defense as Patrick Ramsey has put the Skins in position. Because the defensive end on the right side gets up the field, they pin the nose tackle, and that hole was about 10 yards wide over on that left side for Patrick Ramsey to run in. First and 10 now from the 31 yard line. Keep it on the ground, give it to Betts. He turns out about three to the 28. So it'll probably come down to a whole field goal attempt. And one of the reasons the Redskins paid so much money to get John is over the last six years, they've had 11 different guys attempt kicks here, including, you know, Brett Conway, who seemed to be here about every 15 minutes. How about Mosley? Did they ever think of bringing him back? <laughs> he could probably he still do for it. a heck of a long time. Mark Mosley, straightaway kicker. Dan Snyder watching the clock tick down. Second down and seven from the 28. So right now you're looking at about a 45-yard field goal attempt. 
Betts. Picks up the first down, takes the ball to the 17-yard line. And now the Redskins can take it all the way down and maybe just leave themselves a little extra time in case of a bad snap. You don't want to take the clock down to almost zero. Don't you get the feeling that Liddell Betts is going to be the starting tailback for this Redskin team? Uh, he's going to see a lot more action than we would have thought earlier tonight. I tell you, you, know, you think front, front candidate, I think right now Liddell Betts. First and ten, they give it to Betts through the middle. They set it up perfectly in front of the goalpost, and they take the time out here. So they would have time in case you have an errant snap to cover up and take another timeout. They've left themselves enough time, if needed, for a second field goal attempt. Patrick Ramsey in the first half made a bunch of big plays with his arm, and then in this fourth quarter made a big, big one with his legs. So like last year on opening night when Cortez kicked one with six seconds left, here comes John Hall to try to finish off the Jets. And he does it without putting his chin strap over his chin. And he gets that stretch, that whole thing going back as that whole ritually goes through. Brian Barker to hold, Ethan Albright to snap. How's this? You know, I mean, they talk about the jet skins and the four guys, and it all boils down to one of the ex-Jets kicking against his old team for the win. Spotted at the 22, a 32-yard attempt. And Hall's kick is just good. Inside the left upright. With five seconds left on the clock, time for just a swift kickoff. It was funny how all the all the fans in front of us are turning around and looking at Daniel Snyder, and they're clapping for Daniel Snyder saying, thanks for getting John Hall for us. Started left, stayed inside the upright. John Hall knew it right when he kicked that ball. That's a grand to say, just be inside the pipe. It is. Woo! And there's Lavernius Coles, who had that giant first half. Rod Gardner in front of him. So a big night for the Jetskins. You know, one thing that goes with this is they have the bragging rights, but bigger than that is, is you get your opener, and openers are big, and you want to start off 1-0, and, and the Redskins are going to do that. 1-0, and, and they get down to Atlanta in their next game to face the Michael Vickless Falcons, and then come back to face the Giants. And for the Jets, all of a sudden, a little bit of a hole that they've already built for themselves. They've got Miami and New England over the next two weeks. I thought they had some opportunities and made some bad play calls. Yep. Bouncing ball. Fielded at the 19-yard line by Lamont Jordan. And one of the reasons the Jets were done in tonight, their total yardage, 158 yards. Their lowest total in six years. Started out, they looked good on the first drive, and then all of a sudden, the Redskins defense with a new coordinator, George Edwards, does its job. Ramsey has a big first half, so does Coles. Cole winds up winning the game, and Washington knocks off the New York Jets on opening night 16-13. There you get down, you get a tie score, you're in the fourth quarter. Someone has to make a big play. Patrick Ramsey goes back to pass. The Jets are in a three-man. So the Washington Redskins using four ex-Jets beat New York on opening night of the NFL season. We're back with more in a moment.
Your compliments keep coming in. Whoever came up with that format, I absolutely applaud them for watching outstanding football. Your passion for the game makes the show a success. There's no question about it. Africa deserves to have the World Cup. I love your fair and down-to-earth comments. I think goals should be the way you decide matches over a season. You guys rock. With Tommy and Eddie, I'm JP. We'll see you next week on Press Pass. Fridays on ESPN. ESPN's Friday Night Fights. The NABF middleweight title is on the line when Canadian Kinsley EKK goes for his 18th victory against Kenny Ellis. Championship boxing tonight on ESPN. In the ring, it's one-on-one -on -one action. Your hands are your only weapon. Your body, your opponent's target. Any moment, your brain will tell you it's time to take a nap. Top rate boxing every week on ESPN. There's a place where great ones face off, a place where strength is measured, a place to be considered the best, a place the away for Champions League. The search for the best of the best. Starts September 17, only on ESPN. Speed. Do you crave the hair-raising thrill of the race? has all the speed you desire and we serve it up fast speed thrills on espn by virtue of a 16 to 13 victory the redskins now lead the all-time series with the jets seven to one so new york having all kinds of problems finding any type of offense. Let's pick it up in the fourth quarter here with Abraham forcing the fumble, which was recovered by Jason Ferguson. It was just a three-point game at that point until Doug Bryant came on to tie it up with 8.13 to play at 13 all. But some problems here on third and short. Dropping Gordon for the loss there. As the Redskins hold. This was the key play. Patrick Ramsey nowhere to go with it. Pulls it down. Gets the first down and more. 21 yards and all to the 31-yard line. Already into field goal range for John Hall, who would come on a couple of plays later and kick that 32-yarder with five seconds left. And that was the difference. The Washington Redskins with a three-point win. Washington was able to run up 309 yards, 185 on the arm of Patrick Ramsey. They turned it over two times. And perhaps that's the reason this was a close game at all. Because you look what the New York Jets did, and it was not a whole lot. They got just 11 first downs and 154 total yards. So now with this game in the books, we can turn to Sunday of week one and NFL Sunday night football here on ESPN. The Tennessee Titans and Oakland Raiders do battle. That in a rematch of the AFC championship game. So one game is in the books. The NFL on ESPN on opening night. The Redskins end up beating the Jets 16 to 13 for our entire NFL on ESPN crew. I'm Mark Brown. So long, everyone. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. In the ring, it's one-on-one -on -one action. Your hands are your only weapon. Your 
dead body. Your opponent's target. And in any moment, your brain will tell you it's time to take a nap. Top rate boxing every week on ESPN. ESPN delivers two of Europe's greatest imports. From Holland, the speed and fury of Dutch football. And the rough and tumble Scottish Premier League. Giants of the game, PSV Eindhoven. Ajax Amsterdam. Feyenoord Rotterdam. As well as old firm rivals, Celtic and Rangers. Experience total football on the channel that gives you the footballing world. ESPN. ESPN brings you the Kroger Senior Classic. Last year, Bob Gilder got his second consecutive win when he defeated Tom Jenkins in the playoff. The Kroger Senior Classic, first round, Saturday on ESPN. The Warriors of the NFL return to ESPN for another season of American football. The silver and black attack of the Oakland Raiders invade Tennessee to tackle the Titans. In a return match of last year's conference finals, Steve McNair leads his team against the aging superstars of Oakland. The intensity of this AFC rivalry grows with each encounter. Let the games begin. Raiders Titans, live Monday, the NFL on ESPN. ESPN thanks you for watching this presentation of the National Football League. ESPN welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. tries to do it again. But amid all the first game fanfare, could the Jets hold on in D.C.? The Blue Jays go for the pinstripe sweep, while the best series of the season caps off with even more fireworks. And Schultz has been ejected. The Open finally gets down to business. We're back in the saddle again. Sports Center now. Linda Cohn. From Brittany to Mary J. Blige, the NFL opened with a bang, and you know what? The game wasn't too bad either. And rarely does the pregame hype turn out to be much more than just hot air, but when this one was over, the ex-Jets actually had something to do with the outcome against the current Jets. Steve, not so superior last season, but it's a brand new season. He's got new players like former Jet Lavernius Coles. First quarter, it's a second and 17 play. Patrick Ramsey had a great first half, goes to Coles, 25 yards. That's a Washington first down. Later in the drive, another former Jet. It's John Hall from 50 yards away. It is up, and it is good. Chad Pennington out with the broken wrist for New York. Vinny Testaverde gets the start. Here's Chad on Vinny. He has a lot of experience, and what uh, I think Vinny just needs to do is play within himself and uh, be Vinny. And as long as he's Vinny and plays the way I know he's capable of playing, we'll be fine. Vinny was being Vinny right there, hitting Wayne, who was being Wayne. Wayne Crevette for 14 yards. Later on the Jets' drive, Vinny to Anthony Beck for 11 yards. First and goal. Vinny is going to roll to the right. Now, in his younger days, he might have tried to turn that corner and run in for the score. But this time, he decides to put it up. Gerald Soule, back of the end zone, drops it. After the skin stopped him on second and third down, Jets go for it on fourth down. Lamont Jordan leaps into the end zone for the touchdown. He bails out Soul. The Jets take the lead. Linda, help me, please. Jet seven skins Patrick Ramsey. Finding Coles for a 48-yard gain. What a play. Ramsey 12 to 13, 156 yards in the first half alone. Ramsey again hooking up with Coles. Five catches, 106 yards all in the first half. That would lead to this. Former Jet John Hall from 22 yards away. 13-7 at the break, Steve. So the halftime show was probably nice in the third quarter on third and seven. Here's Ramsey looking to his right, throwing that way, intercepted by Donnie Abraham. That would be the only pick Ramsey would throw in the game. The ensuing drive. Here's Testaverde. 
has plenty of time. Great protection. Fires for Wayne Corbett. Broken up by Matt Bowen. Heck of a defensive play there. Jets would settle for a field goal. Early fourth watch, John Abraham. Ramsey dropping back. Abraham beating Chris Samuels and strips the ball from Ramsey. Jason Ferguson recovers it. Abraham is pumped up. Could this be a turning point? Here comes new Jets kicker Doug Bryan from 41 yards away to tie it. And it's good. So late in the fourth, still tie game. Jets ball second and one. Had trouble converting from short yardage. Here's an example. Curtis Martin wrapped up by LeVar Arrington. Next play, third and one. After a timeout to talk it over, this is what they came up with. Lamont Jordan tripped up by Jeremiah Trotter. Jets would be forced to punt on fourth. On the ensuing drive, Ramsey. I mean, this is a guy not known for his mobility, right? What does he do? He couldn't find anybody, so he takes off for a 24-yard gain. Later, Ramsey talked about his option to run. These guys are such playmakers. I just want to get the ball in their hands. Uh, obviously, as you saw, they're much faster than I am. Uh, but fortunately enough, I had an opening. Uh, I was able to get down in bounds. Meantime, John Hall warming up for a potential game-winning field goal. Skin still driving. Ramsey looking to get close to form. Hands off with Liddell Betts. An 11-yard game. Betts, 18 carries, 77 yards. And that'll set up this. Hall with a chance to kick it to his former mates where it hurts. 33 yards away for the win, and it's good. What a victory for Washington and the Jets skins. Lavernius Coles just adores it. So John Hall kicks the life out of his uh, ex-teammates with three field goals, including that game winner and a 50-yarder. The Jets offense time and time again could not come up with a big play, going three for 12 in third down conversions. Vinny Testaverde, 15 to 24 for 105 yards. As for Patrick Ramsey, we break down his performance with our quarterback, Sean Salisbury. Thank you very much, Linda. When you watch Patrick Ramsey tonight after holding out a training camp last year, it's amazing what camp will do. And you'll win over the respect of your teammates faster by making the plays he made tonight than any other way and he did it early in this game and he did it often have a look see now patrick ramsey eyes up the field steps right up in the pocket where he's supposed to not watching the rush here's what i love the presence of mind you see all that clutter there he doesn't force that ball he could have stepped up in that part of the pocket and been late throwing it over their head no nice soft touch we know the arm but the soft touch to get him a touchdown great way to get your uh, season started that's not an athletic pose, is it? You want to bring it a little bit closer together. There you are where the red markers are. But what's he do? Makes what you're supposed to make. You make a play, there's six or seven times in a game you got to do it. His head snaps up, understanding where his receivers are instead of looking at the rush again. Knows where all his players are. Makes the wonderful throw to Lavernius Coles. Great start for Ramsey. Great leadership. The players will respond. Looking at the other side now, here's Lavernius Coles. You think this guy was a good addition? He was Pennington's guy last year. Did he get it started right with Ramsey? Good receivers. Here he is, Coles. Don't ever let you know which way they're going. Is he going here, here, or here? You tell me his head's up the field. You don't know which is advantage. Put your foot in the ground, snap your head around, find the quarterback. It's a receiver's job to catch it and run with it and do something. One more time. Look at the cushion. Coles, where's he going? Here to the post? Is he going to come in here? His head's going to snap around again. Always find it, plant. Always get back to that quarterback there. Ramsey will put it where he needs to. And how about this? He finishes the play. Coles is going to be a superstar in this league. And we go over now to the other side. It looked to me like the Jets played like a team that did not want to win the game tonight. They played not to lose. Why on third and nine aren't you two yards beyond the marker? You catch an eight-yard pass and get to seven, you got a punt. Kills your team. Let's do it again. There you see third and nine. Vinny, this is a combination of where to throw it, the receiver getting to the stripe, and the play calling. Why are you running another eight-yard route when you need to get two yards beyond, and if you come back and catch it, it's a first down? Now, this final one, not necessarily a bad call. It's third and four, but the execution. Lavernius Coles on the other side gets it. Santana Moss, his eyes are inside. On a screen, you run away from trouble. Not into it. Go straight up the field. He tries to make too much happen. Gets himself a loss of yardage. Things like that cause your team trouble. Herman Edwards now has to take him back, get things fixed. But I will tell you this, Steve Levy, they can't afford not to run it and throw it better and get it in order to go on and make the playoffs. It wasn't a big, big game for uh, the Jets tonight. They struggled. Straight ahead, inside Sports Center. What a series, Cubs cards. ESP.
ESPN's Tuesday Night Fights. Everybody seems to fall down when Ty Fields climbs into the ring. And he'll go for his 28th knockout against Sherman Williams and a shot at the USBA heavyweight title. Tuesday on ESPN. The Yankees just... We were pumping up how much of a grudge match the NFL season opener was. It was the Jet Skins against the Jets. And as it turned out, it wasn't just hype. All four, led by Lavernius Coles and John Hall, set the tone in a game that didn't have much rhythm for the Jets. The Jets' offense gaining the fewest yards in six seasons, just 86 yards after the first drive. Sal Palantonio has more. Oh, you know what? There's nothing better than beating your old team. For the four ex-Jets, the poetic justice could not have been more sweet. Lavernius Coles made big plays to justify his big contract. Oh, it meant a lot because, you know, I felt like um, um, I was a missing piece, um, you know, once they let me go. You know, I didn't think that they would be the same without me. And, you know, I wanted to come over here and show them what they were missing. And I came over and I played well tonight and uh, our team got a victory. Chad Morton proved he could make an impact on special teams. But I wanted to win so bad. I was... When I was getting that last drive, I was running down the sideline like, God, I, you know, we need this win. I want to get it so bad. And, and uh, you know, just to be able to run out there and taunt the team and, you know, just, just to have that upper hand against them, you know, it was, it's, it's the best feeling right now. And as John Hall lined up the game-winning field goal, Randy Thomas could feel the sense of irony overwhelm his former teammates. See those guys with their faces down after the kick went it was uh, a loving feeling. Playing around John, you know, we used to hope to God that he was going to miss it, but you know, he's made that kick for us before, so, you know, you just, just pray that he missed it, but you know, there's a good chance he's going to make it. I've been every day at the end of the, uh, my day practice, and I said, this is to beat the Jets. I knew it was coming. I just had that kind of feeling. I just had a feeling, and that's what happened. So I feel like I've been preparing for a long time for this. When the melodrama and hype from this game finally subsides, a closer look will reveal that none of the ex-Jets played on the Redskins defense. And it was that defense which was the real difference on Thursday night, holding the Jets to just 11 first downs and only 158 yards total offense. At FedEx Field, Sal Palantonio, ESPN. Thank you, Sal. You know, the three former Jets who actually handled the ball Thursday for Washington almost outgained their former team all by themselves. Coles and Morton combined for 117 yards of total offense, only 41 fewer than the entire New York team. And Hall's 10 points, only three fewer than the Jets could manage. Hey, don't forget, ESPN Sunday Night Football kicks off this weekend with a rematch of the AFC. Three wins himself, and he'll do exactly what the Cowboys do well. He'll, he'll push that run as often as possible. Even though they're not great at it, he'll find a way to get Hambrick the football. He'll also play top 10 defense, and they will put their offense in position on the short field to be in games. They're no bye week. This team gets to eight wins. Bill Parcells makes a huge difference this year. Yeah, he does, but the team doesn't. They're not good enough to be an eight-win team at this stage. They can't consistently run the ball. Quincy Carter and Chad Hudson will make mistakes, and you combine that, the defense doesn't have enough playmakers to get those turnovers. Hey, Parcells is worth three wins. This team's worth five. Hey, John, speaking of making mistakes, what about the New England Patriots letting four-time Pro Bowl safety lawyer Malloy get out of their reach? Now he's a Buffalo Bill. Let's start with Sean. Is this a big mistake? You know what, I think in the short term it is, but in the long term, no. Lawyer Malloy will make a difference in Buffalo, and it's kind of curious at the timing. If you wanted to get rid of him, why didn't you do it a month ago so you could work somebody into the secondary in New England? But Bill Belichick's far smarter than any of us are. He's the best game plan defensive guy in the league. He'll find a way to deploy these guys properly and fit in that position. And remember, financially, two number ones and two number twos next year. In the long run, Lawyer Malloy will be better in Buffalo. Hey, but come on, Sean. Number one, it may be good for two games, but still, Buffalo's good for 14 other games because of this move and the move last year with Drew Bledsoe because Bledsoe gave him an offense that can get him to eight wins. Now with Malloy, that completes the defense and can get them a little above them. That's where the mistake is. You don't let them go to a division rival. All right, third down, guys. Let's fantasize. Do you mind? But the subject matter here, none other than Maurice Claret, who may go to court to get into the NFL a year earlier than possible. Let's just say he can. Is this guy a top 10 pick in next year's draft? 
Absolutely. Hey, you're talking about one of the best backs this year being on one leg, Willis McGahee. He's certainly a top 10 back because you can't find many backs as good as Claret. The problem is, as a third year guy, he's still not completely ready as his body, but I have to think that he's available in the draft. He goes in the top 10, but again, that legal fight could go two years just to try to get him into the NFL. John, you have got to be kidding. McFly, is anybody home? Maurice Claret's not even a top five running back in college football this year, and you're going to compare him to Willis McGahee? Gahey? Name me the there, other four, not, Sean. Hey, whoa, 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 Who are whoa, the whoa. other four? They're not even in the same class. Come see me in two or three years, and maybe he's a first-round pick. If you're a general manager, John, and you take him with your first ten picks, you'll be out of the league in five years because that would be a dumb move. He's not tough enough to handle a 20-game schedule. He sure as heck didn't handle him an 11-game schedule in college. Not going to happen. Be a wasted pick, my friend. Nice cars, though. Be a wasted pick. Decisions, decisions, fourth down now, and we're talking about Drew Henson. What is he going to do? We know he's done with baseball. We know the Texans drafted him last April. What does Henson do? Does he sign with the Texans or re-enter in next year's draft? The only thing dumber for Drew Henson to do would be go back and play baseball more than to sign with the Texans. How can you do it? Sixth round money. You could be a first round pick if you go back into the draft next year. You don't want the Texans to hold you hostage and use you as either a bargaining tool or the fact is an insurance policy. Drew Henson's a top 10 pick. Drew Henson would have been the first quarterback taken in David Carr's year. Guess what? Hold out. Take your time. You'll get first round money and you'll be a starter for years. It'd be ludicrous to go to Houston and anybody who knows football knows that. It'd be ludicrous to do what you're doing, Sean, because again, once again, it's taking your chance and going the money. He's already got the money and he'll get the money get the trade done because what he can do is go there learn for a season he's already going to get 12 million dollars he's going to leave with the yankees get the money already from the yankees and then what he does he will be traded to a team that he wants to go to and then have a chance to succeed hey sean how about having a chance to succeed there's a different oh, concept oh, yeah yeah john hell you're already dictating a trade two years down the road if you're in houston you're going to make sure it's the perfect situation it's not about the money When's the last time you put on a jockstrap or a uniform? It's always about the money. And for Drew Henson, he'd be nuts not to go back into the draft and get first-round money. That's always your curveball that you're swinging and missing. All right, guys, all right, guys save your always. strength. Save your strength. This is a very long season. But you are in mid-season form. And how about that? No name-calling. That's it from here. Mind is still on football with the ESPN Sunday Night Football game this weekend. The rematch of the AFC title contest, Raiders and Titans, who basically hate each other. Jerry Porter, Lance Schulters with a verbal assault coming up in this show. Raiders and Titans, 8.30 Eastern, following NFL primetime on ESPN. Power Sports Center Top 10 is on the way. There's plenty of defense to choose from in college football and baseball. And we'll flash the leather next the hair-raising thrill of the race? ESPN has all the speed you desire, and we serve it up fast. Speed thrills on ESPN.
ESPN delivers two of Europe's greatest imports. From Holland, the speed and fury of Dutch football. And the rough and tumble Scottish Premier League. Giants of the game, TSV Eindhoven. Ajax Amsterdam. Feyenoord Rotterdam. As well as old firm rivals, Celtic and Rangers. Experience total football on the channel that gives you the footballing world. ESPN. The Bell Canadian Open continues on ESPN when Friday afternoon, 3 Eastern. Ontario native Mike Weir, he says, would be a dream come true if he can win this event. Right now, he's in a group of eight, tied at one under.